something bad if he doesn't shut up. Taking that cat out. What's <laughs> up, everybody? Nothing. <laughs> this is Carrick with ACG, and I'm here with Johnny and Abzi. Silver is out ill. We are doing the best gaming podcast number 460. We're going to talk about Kingdom Come 2 Deliverance. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. Kingdom Come 2 Deliverance. Sounds weird. As well as Remnant 2 and its DLC and gaming news from the week. We've got a bunch of stuff to discuss, actually. Uh, somebody just said, rise, rise from your grave. Man, that reminds me so much of Altered Beast. What a great moment that was in gaming. Oh, Rise yeah. from your graves. Back then when the you know the audio was just scratchy, <laughs> fake voices. Uh, I want to thank everybody for showing up. Thanks for the super chat. It helps the channels, as you guys know, or channel. We're not sponsored. We don't have multiple channels, so I guess I could say that. And uh, it... You know, we hope you have a good time jumping in and streaming some games with us. Lately, we've been streaming all kinds of stuff. WWE has caught on. For some, it, it, it's not really WrestleMania yeah, inspired, weird, but it's that like, is, I feel like I'm in the '90s, but with yeah, streaming on yeah. Discord. We went know? in and it was just like five people streaming WWE randomly, completely not connected with clips. Just like, oh yeah, somebody had clips uh, turned on in our Discord uh, voice chat. It was like, uh oh, watch out. But yeah, yeah. it's it was a very fun time. Um, uh, Oregon Oregon Fresh is already in main character syndrome right away. Didn't take him anything to state it. I'm just here to get roasted. Yeah. Oregon Fresh has main character syndrome really bad. So everything's about him. <laughs> Every single thing's about him. Just so we'll you guys know, about you, buddy. There, there's, a, there's a setting on Steam, uh, and it's called Clips, and I think you should all turn it off because it uh, reduces on FPS Steam. in games. Uh, sorry, on Discord, and it uh, reduces oh, yeah. FPS in games, and uh, it's kind of invasive, so you can check off allowing your voice to be recorded in clips or not. This basically I feel makes like it so we're it's the only podcast recording who's, and who's warned people, because this will be like the ninth up. time I've mentioned it during a podcast, or that's it's been mentioned during up. a podcast. Yeah, yeah it's, they did it Weird. so silently, too, you know, which is, which is, which is kind of crazy. Um, SBZ, welcome to member. Welcome. Thank you very much for becoming a member. We're going to talk about Kingdom Come, but one of the things I'm actually excited for is this game, guys. Depending on when it's coming out, could be a Switch 2 title. Which one? Think of that. Kingdom Come. It's Kingdom just, Come? Yeah. Is it, do you think it's coming out? Oh, yeah, if Switch 2. It could it could potentially come out on release for the Switch 2. That yeah. would be exciting. Wouldn't that be the weirdest day? Dude, to... imagine. I Sorry, mean... yeah. Go, go. Go ahead, I'm go just ahead. saying it would be the weirdest day. That's I don't really would have be anything the to add day. to that, actually. And I was I was just saying, like, imagine it's not not just the triple A games that would be cross platform on three platforms, just also the double A. And I, I hope that they make it easier for for uh, for uh, creators to put their games on on that platform. Yeah, as, as I know, it's pretty hard to put it on the Nintendo Store, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see, Kingdom Come Deliverance Two is the best news I've heard in years. This is from Dubs Twenty Four. Cheese D says, happy for the Kingdom Come Deliverance people. I tried, couldn't really get into it. Yep, it happens. I'm very happy for it. The title uh, is how I became aware Kingdom Come, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is a thing, and now I'm so fucking hyped. Oh, our title? Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about it. There's not a lot of data. Also, I, I do want to say, um, if I or if I was not signed to an NDA to talk about it, I, the only thing I, the only things I could discuss during this podcast are the leaks on Twitter of people talking about it. So just so you know, uh, anything we talk about today would be from Twitter posts from others who have started to discuss this game. Let's see, what have we been like, been playing, Johnny? What have you been like enjoying this week? So I finished my Dragon's Dogma two playthrough. I did the true ending stuff. Uh, it was incredible, like the way that. Don't say too much. Though. Ads. Yeah, we won't say the. Uh, yeah. How it just changes uh, uh, and adds to the game. Yeah, just. Anyway, that the the way that whole journey completed was fantastic. I was That's enjoying awesome. it a lot throughout. There were mm -hmm. some frustrations and stuff, but overall, like when you look back at it, uh, when you look back at it, uh, it is like a, a a playthrough I'll remember probably for a very long time that's very cool yeah i saw your little post and then you dm'd me and stuff and uh, I, I was, I was all emotional like you know the boat sailing in the horizon i yeah. was telling people that i can usually tell if somebody's you know what ending somebody's got or what they've done at the ending by the response that they give when they say you know i beat dragon's dogma or 
oh my god, it'd be Dragon's Dogma, blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, I can tell. It's very cool. Uh, what else have you been playing other than that? Uh, Final Fantasy VII. So I got obsessed. I did all the Chocobo races. They're like Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. And you can get in there. There are a lot of races. They're super fun to do. And I've been doing all the extras and everything. And I'm now finally at the point where, like, Chapter 12, I've done everything in every area. Um, not every, like, minigame optional stuff necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like, some stuff I skipped that I didn't enjoy as much. But, um, yeah, just been, like, my chill game to go to. So have you been doing any uh any like music making or anything like that so i'm just fixing this camera. yeah i've been i've been working on uh on the song i got sort of like the framework of it going mm -hmm. it's been really interesting it started it's funny because you and i had a little like back and forth about you know uh how i really like outros in songs and i yeah. wanted to play around with creating a song that kind of sounds like an outro all the way mm -hmm. uh it, it did not work instead just like a, <laughs> you know some song materialized from that initial thing mm -hmm. but it's not that so i i still haven't been able to you know to achieve that but uh but it's been really fun i'm good dude i'm sincerely glad to hear you're back doing it because um abzi myself Five or six other people on our discord do music and if you're a writer or a musician or yeah. have you nothing's there this is gonna sound really weird i'm okay with writer's block because i'm focused on that i have writer's block or that i have musician's block what i don't like is when i'm apathetic towards it and so yeah, and idea, i was kind of like that for a I year know. so it's really yeah. nice to to get out of that and yeah. one cool thing by the way is this thing that I picked up, which is like a drum machine? Oh, yeah, drum machine, USB pad. And, awesome. Yeah, uh, but it's really good because it's created with the like positioning of the pads for finger drumming. So you can actually cool. like drum a full track on this on the go. Uh, can you show me normally... the, uh, can you tweet me the link to that? Or I'm just uh, DM me the link yeah. to that when you're done. Yeah, I, I, I will. Yeah, it's very inspiring to play with. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I'm also not great with my thumbs and ti and timing too much. It takes a lot. Like you'll see Ron Jankies going and on his, on, you know, just like yeah, da, 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 and it's perfect. And I can make the sounds perfect, but my thumbs usually I have to go in and straight up, you know, like put it down lick by lick. You know, item what's by cool item with this stuff. one too is that it's kind of an instrument in and of itself because it mm -hmm. has speakers. So I take it sometimes I'm in the bedroom listening to music and I have that and I play over something with oh, it. It's not just a controller. It, it can be. I use it, it in my it DAW its as well. Own sound or, yeah. or is it yeah, software based? It does. Is it analog? That's crazy. Yeah. That's uh, and then um so so anyway, so, sorry, it's really you were good saying too. you go you go to bed or you lay down and you yeah, can Yeah, you could be you in the bedroom it, and like use it to practice. So it's very easy to just jam in a track while you're listening to something, you know, it's mm -hmm. light, it's small. And then you can also use it in your DAW to, to drive your, like, you know, pro sounds, whatever yeah. you're doing for recording. Well, also, by looking at it, I would personally probably set up a profile to make it appear somewhat like a drum set. Because if you notice, it goes flangs out a bit like a drum set would. So you could actually go like, you know, cymbal, snare, all that kind of stuff and sort That's of have That's more it. or less how it works out. It's really oh, okay. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I could definitely see using it a little bit like a, because I, I, I know it's a drum. I know people are like, it is a drum pad. It is. But I'm saying a lot of those are not set up in, this, in the actual physical sort of way you might think of it in your brain. And so the, the closer you can mimic it, the better. Yeah. But usually no, I'm sincerely squares. happy. You, yeah, it's usually, yeah, yeah, I've got one. The, what a Korg? I've got a core and yeah. it's got yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know, I probably 10 by 10 or whatever. And after a while you're like 10 by 10, but what is number nine? Like, at yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you know, unless yeah. you do it a lot. The native but... instruments one, the machine is really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. There, I, I like those devices, especially if you're really into it, but uh, certainly don't jump into this stuff unless you're willing to spend some money and you are going to put your stuff on SoundCloud. Don't just create it on your own, man. We've had people on our discord who throw stuff up on SoundCloud and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm embarrassed by it. And I'm like, dude, you have something up there to be embarrassed by. There's 
there's this huge gulf between the people who post and do stuff and the people who, you know, it's like sometimes you just got to throw it up there and see what sticks and see. Like even if somebody says, hey, this is terrible and you're making a mistake here or there, something, something to learn by. What uh, when it comes to reading or anything, Johnny, have you been reading anything? Um, so I finished that book that I was talking to you about last time. I'm reading a book called 14. Um, it's by Peter. It's one that I had already read in the past, but I absolutely loved 14 Audible. And I need to dig up the actor's name, Peter Kleins. Mm -hmm. And this is um, a Lovecraftian tale, but told in contemporary times, like in modern times. Is this times. the apartment complex? It is. I think Dude. you... you mm. I did. Listen I got to you. It or you. I, I, yeah. I did. I'm pretty sure you heard me talking about others and found it too. It might not be you. It might have been a different. Maybe it I might don't know been, how I found it. Yeah, yeah dude. It 14 is legit, man. It it's is so fun. It, it, it is so fun. It is so fun. And the contemporary stuff where it's you know the yeah. way the talking is is a little. It, it may be dated in a year because of how d language works, but when it came out and currently right now, yeah. it's fun to listen or read. It's because... kind of like relatable, right? Because mm -hmm. the guy yep. is an IT worker, so I'm an yeah. IT worker. Yeah. Time. And then uh, also the way it's set up like a little Scooby-Doo gang mystery yep. type thing where everybody has their job, but they're on the side looking yep. into this mystery. And I and love that it... some of them continue to go to work, yeah. Johnny, and then they come home yeah. and do the mystery. Yeah. They're like, I still got to pay the bills at McDonald's, but I'll yeah. be home tonight to figure out about That's... this thing. Oh, it's cool. Very cool. You're re so you're rereading it? Yeah, I'm just re-listening to it. I actually like the audible version mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, they did the good voice acting. The reader was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about you, Abzi? What have you been playing or making or writing or reading or any <laughs> well, of Well, I'm on vacation, so I've been just, uh, just, just gaming, you know what I mean? Just gaming as much as I can, um, you know, before I have to go back to the work life, real life responsibilities and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, I've just been playing uh, the Horizon Forbidden West and uh, Tarkov, of course. You know, Tarkov is like a constant thing. It's always there. Uh, it's always there. It's never getting uninstalled. Do you play with and... people, Absy, or is it like... I was so... playing with people for a while to swipe, but I don't know, man. Like the online, um, there's a lot of issues with the game online. Uh, like desync issues and, and uh, cheaters and all that stuff. So oh, like that? There's a I mod. thought you meant like toxic or people being dicks yeah no uh but there's like there's mods that uh you know there's a mod called single player tarkov which makes a single player game and uh a lot of mods for that which you can customize for your own pleasure and it's been very addicting it's been really really fun uh yeah it's been really good any so just mostly because it's the vacation not doing anything other than just getting the game time yeah, that yeah, you missed yeah. out on Super yeah. lazy right now, yeah. Yeah, I have a couple of days left, so going to make the most out of it. Isn't it funny that when you're on vacation, like you play games, but sometimes you do better work on musician stuff if you have to come home. I, I feel like sometimes when I have to come home and I, and I want to put a song down or I want to do whatever, I actually do much better when, I'm, when I have a timeline. I've got two hours tonight before wife comes home or before whatever no. so i'm gonna write something down or do something and then when i'm on vacation i'm like yeah i'll get to it <sighs> exactly that's that's the thing i don't want to be productive at all or i want to yeah, be fully exactly. productive i'm not exactly. going to the gym you know i've been i've been resting from that you know anything when, when i when i have one thing that i'm doing let's say i'm going to the gym or i'm eating well everything has to follow or else i don't feel i i, I mess up on everything yeah so if i'm eating well i have to go to the gym i have to be productive i have to be on it's my all shit. coupled together. Yeah, it has like... to be all together. I can't do like baby steps. Like I can't be like, hey, I, I'll just start with this. You know, all of it has to go. You know, so yeah, yeah. I get that. I have been. Um, so, uh, we were asked, uh, does anybody like uh, Clive Cussler? Yeah, he's one of my favorite authors of all time. Read every book, including the ones by his son I and his pseudo partner. Um, they were, they they were awesome. They're pretty good now, but they're basically a navy version of James Bond. It's a it's Sahara the movie with Matthew McConaughey was based on a, a book of his as well as Raise the Titanic and yeah Clive Cussler is I'm very seeing Dragon fun. Black Wind Dragon is one of the it's a little older so some of the tech is weird you know no cell phones more walkie talkies to talk into you know or, or voice mics that's the thing with spy thrillers or what have you 
they age really quick. You know, like right now I see a, a spy thriller. Abzi and I spent almost an hour talking about uh, Splinter Cell, right? That was last. Was that or did we? I think so. I think was that, me, that was that. A, yeah. Where drones have made it. So you see a movie and you're like, why is a drone not just killing these guys? You know, or whatever. It's true. It's, it's definitely yeah, adjusting. Yeah. Um, but is it like Lovecraftian in that sense? Like no, the grandiose? Is, no, no, uh, no. Okay, gotcha. No, definitely not. Very, uh, very uh, action adventure. James Bond, Indiana Jones. Very. Uh. Dirk Pitt's the main character, and he's he's not impervious. He does get beat up, but oh. it's one of those things where you always know at the end it'll one of their team he'll, will come. He'll figure through. it out. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Let's see. What else are we talking about? Um, somebody said, listening to Carrick yell at his dogs to shut him up had me cracking up. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> they won't do it. I think at 1130 they will. Um, oh, Caesar says that. Dude, Carrick yelling at his dogs during the last episode had me dying. He sounds like me when I yell at my cats to get off the table. <laughs> Bitlera says, "Love, uh, uh, LOL, appreciate your commit to, commitment to outros. He says, do you still write an intro for the outro? I think so. Intro right? for the outro. <laughs> you still you still gotta yeah. build up you gotta introduce people the you know what the in what the instruments will be otherwise it's just an outro it's just yeah, one you, long you always, outro oh you always need a uh oh an intro to the outro i never thought of that i don't know yeah, that's... i mean <laughs> yeah at that point we're in deep shit abs in you're the, being yeah. asked what headphones you use uh sennheiser hd 6xx the oh, mask dude, drop yeah. uh sennheiser uh duo thing yeah yeah, I've had them since 2020, and I've never. I complained. still have mine too. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I used to love them. Those are good. Those are one of their good headsets. They've got a. They definitely, as they've got gone forward, they've a little let like they they have headsets that I would call almost lemons, but they're still one of my favorite. They're they're pretty I love expensive. I these buds too. These buds Sense. are really really sick. Yeah. I think their sends are. Awesome. I think that is the sends uh, headbuds are actually a little better than her headphones and like overall how many I like and stuff. I, mm. I do. I do enjoy their stuff. Uh, Ubisoft is releasing another Prince of Persia game. Any thoughts? Yeah, that's a Dead Cells developers. You guys, dude, all the saw art that, right? style looks awesome. Yeah, it looks really really cool. I'm very down for it. Really, you like yeah, that of art course, style? Yeah. It looks wow. really cool. You're the first really person I've heard say that. That's the big thing that's Very been sticking unique. on people. It reminds me a lot of Banner Saga. Do you guys remember the turn-based yeah, RPG? Yeah, yeah. It's got that weird... It's like shading on top of cell, Almost cell shading. Almost comic book. Almost like comic book. Art, je sens artsy. a little bit at times. Like, je sens. Yeah, I, John's I liked favorite it game. a lot. Je, je sens. No, that's cool. Um, It's Dead Cells, right? So they know what they're doing. I think that's yeah. the one big positive. And guys, it's crazy. Ubisoft knew what they were doing because the last one was great. So imagine that. Imagine Prince of Persia suddenly becoming a thing now, all of a sudden. If they have two hits, yeah. that'd be... It's mm -hmm. early access, though, so I'm not going to touch it. Um, just because that kind of game, early access, I'm not going to want to replay and play and replay and play. I but. feel like those I might touch in early, see what the feel is, Jump just in. like with Hades, too. Just go in, see, okay, what what we got going but not right. get too deep into it at all you, uh, until you, it's fully did you out. do dead souls early access johnny i did yeah that was one where i was a little bit involved giving input and stuff and like playing Ooh. it a lot you actually took the access part to the point of i did giving them I'm, I'm not saying that my feedback was actioned no, I know. on I know, uh, or anything it. just that you know i participated in my small way <laughs> powder cake says my scalp has dead cells your entire body does buddy you're schluffing <laughs> off dead Dead stuff all the time. Good books. Indiana Jones meets Bond. Yep, that's Clive Cussler. Move ah. on from there. I w back to Kingdom Come, or as the main topic. Um, so Kingdom Come to some people have leaked that there's some news coming out soon, and then and then they leaked it prior. Then Warhorse said, "Hey, we are we are going to be discussing this game. What do you guys want from a Kingdom Come to? Because Abzi and I." We're trying to figure out, like, if you're Henry or whatever, do you lose power and suddenly, you know, you know, because you were really good at the end, somewhat good. Is it going to be him again? Is it going to be the continuation of that character's story? Is it going to be a new character? I was hoping maybe you could choose a couple different, you know, peasant families to be in, you know, so you have maybe a little bit more of a starting <laughs> kind of thing. Alternate, alternate start mod. Alternate start mod, yeah. But uh, yeah. is there anything you guys... I mean, or or are we all just hoping for pretty much the same? 
kind of thing? Like, is there anything you expect or want from this? Um, I love KCD1. I've talked about it multiple times. I think it's one yeah. of the best RPGs out there. We were talking um, in one of the podcasts about Star Citizen, how you can do a lot of stuff manually, and it's really cool to to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just uh, uh, be in that fiction. And uh, KCD is somewhat of the same thing, where That's Alchemy true. in games is just like a menu press. But Alchemy right. and KCD is crazy. It's nuts. You have to go through all the steps. You have to do it manually in-game. And it uh, adds so much life to it. You learn to read. You you literally start as a dumbass peasant who's not only very lacking in terms of skill physically or mentally or whatever, yeah, but you as a player, <laughs> you as a player, you go into the game and and the combat is very unique and very foreign to you. So you as a player are also super underpowered right because you're yeah. not you don't have time with the game so you as a player also advance with henry and just become a god by the end of it um i love i love that game and i really yeah that's a thing one of the biggest things about the game was starting starting out like that so i wonder how they'll replicate that in the sequel i don't think you'll be playing henry again um but uh but definitely definitely that part of the game i think uh, they they should they should pull off in some 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 form or another you know what i mean where you start off very weak and and and, and do you progress think, through the game right. do you think it would detract from that experience if we had like a party in the game if you could have like a you know oh like jrpg party like going with the boys of? like the backstreet boys yeah. through the I don't know, man. Kind of, or yeah. more like the pawns or something, you know, like something to that effect. Pawns. <laughs> what um, if you yeah, start it? What if you start as a knave, right? You level up and you get a horse, you get your sword, your armor, and then you get to have a peasant with you who who like sort of takes on oh. the guise of Henry. Like, go ahead, Johnny. Sorry. No, no, that was a cool idea. Like, start Thanks. at the bottom. You're like someone's squire or something. I do <laughs> like the idea of more games offering that feeling of the side activities being real. So like spell casting, having a spell book be arcane and completely impossible to read when you first get it. And then maybe you level up once and you see some words in it in the book. Now, when you look at a scroll, you understand a little bit. You can read a little bit more and then level up, level up until you can finally read it. And what if advanced tactics where you level up and you're doing shorthand in your own spell book, creating better spells? It's weird because as a fantasy fan... Some of my favorite fantasy isn't about spellcasters being powerful. It's about spellcasters or somebody learning how to do their own thing and surprising people by going against tradition or, you know, writing their own arcane formulas that are faster for alchemy, that kind of stuff. That would be great, you know. But, of course, there's no spellcasting in this one. But arcane, uh, you know, arcane what it, uh, alchemy books that you find and stuff would be great. I think the combat's already its own thing. So I don't know how much I want them to change when it comes to the combat. Dude, it when is, you get good with that, I, I get why people yeah. think it's clunky or whatever. But when you get used to it and you get good with it, it really pays off. Like, the But it is seal. clunky and that's okay. He's a, It's supposed to be okay. replica. Yeah, yes. uh, yeah, dude, you are yeah. you can't even see out of a... It, have you ever seen somebody put a helmet on? They show the viewpoint of a real helmet. It's exactly. like, no, yeah. it, it, it yeah. is pretty rough. I yeah. absolutely <laughs> adored it. Great yeah. combat. Because it just yeah. feels different. Very and, thoughtful. And that's fine. It's its own thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Every swing uh, is very thoughtful. Every posi the positioning, your your sword. So and you thank you very much, King. Let's see, King Cheese Toast, becoming a member. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I hope you have a good day, and I hope uh, we will reward you in some way. Uh, Augur says the combat system in the combo system in KCD sucked. It was better to spam random attacks than to combo. So the combo system. So like. Weak, weak, strong, or something. Man, I'm I'm not remembering no, was really much good. about that one. I'm, I'm not remembering. <laughs> it was, uh, I don't know. I disagree with that statement heavily, heavily. Maybe maybe you just didn't know how to utilize them. Very. Well. You're you're just bad. Okay, or, good, good. I'm just no, kidding. I'm just kidding. Or he. I'm joking, um, I'm joking. No, I know you. are Or he um, yeah. is wanting something that's more modern that isn't necessarily the reflection KCD's going for. They, yeah, you know, they're just not. It doesn't. People feel want something like, like chivalry or Mordo. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or, or even Dragon's Dogma or something where it's one butt, you know, holding a button does a bunch of things or what have you. KCD's not, they're a simulator in a weird way, you know? It is yeah, it's more, it's more granular. It's yeah. like more about the movement itself rather than like combos, kind of. Anybody who's interested in medieval combat, uh, you know, Insider, GQ, all these websites, uh, YouTubers do these things where they say medieval 
fight instructor watches movie and critiques combat. And it's funny enough, I just watched one about medieval combat two days ago. And that guy, he was even saying about combos. He was talking about different weapons and he was like, there aren't many combos because it doesn't work like that. It's It, it looks pretty bad. Real combat looks pretty bad. Like it looks like two people flailing with, you know, marshmallow hands. It's pretty rough looking. You, you're trying to combo, but the way speed works and hitting a real person, bouncing a and weapon off has a, a real person. Or arm you're just yeah. fucked dude just get a just get a one of the spears and just yeah good, just get man. a spear you know? yeah make sure you have a spear at least on your back yeah. and a bow against and arrow. sword fighters yeah you're yeah. done uh, yeah, you can 1v2 1v5 I, I like the idea of I, I like the idea of it being like so it was clunky at times so their feedback could be better but i don't want the clunkiness to be replaced by something that doesn't feel like a guy in armor he did feel like a guy he you know when you like sort of dressed up it wasn't like skyrim where your character moves the same speed and he's wearing eight thousand pounds of armor with giant yeah i i sort of like the way that uh kingdom come did that i also thought that the world was and still is one of the best looking small sections of a world i have ever seen i mean that game to this day still looks amazing in the landscape so i'm hoping that it's bigger maybe and that they don't go to I don't know what the term would be. I hope they don't go too big. I hope they keep it like a province or something that's really detailed, the the down detail stuff. What if they was, can do both? They could, but with the clunky system and the travel systems that are involved and the time, like with alchemy taking time and all that stuff, I think keeping it somewhat contained w would be probably my fan. The one thing I guess I'm saying I'm worried about is that it wouldn't be open world. It would be loading screens between places and that they would do all these kind of like sort of uh shortcuts to meet the gamer halfway you and i to, think we've... you want it to be like a detailed full pretty detailed experience. yeah yeah i don't need him to like get sweat in his brow and suddently you've got a smear filter on the screen that would be ridiculous. Or... what'd you say do you want horse <laughs> do you want horse balls shrinking or do no you i not? don't need horse balls shrinking you know what's okay. funny that was mentioned in red dead and i can tell you guys I've done a lot of horse riding and i never noticed that so it was more funny that they mentioned that it was simulated i don't I mean, I'm sure there's a YouTube video of it, but in all my years of playing Red Dead, I never looked at the horse's balls long enough to see if they shrunk no, or got bigger. Yeah, just, I just weather. saw them taking shits everywhere, you know? A lot. A lot of poos. Yeah, a lot of poos. I was playing poos. Far Cry Primal last night, and I speared a guy, and I looked over to spear another dude, and I threw it, and I hear this water. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is that sound? I turn around, the, the wolf is right over his head, just pissing right on his face. And I was like... We need to... Ragdolls need to shit themselves like when you kill someone. No, no, I, I'm okay with that. We don't no, need battles nice loosening thing. in battle. Come you gotta on. be realistic if you're making a realistic game, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know? well I mean, it could, yeah, it could be. I mean, a lot of people went to the bathroom prior, though. They so, need to do scripting for all the NPCs and track their their, uh, their bowel movements. And, uh, yeah, their bowel movements. Their... So if you kill them right before, like if they're like full on, full up, you know, they. Were you in the voice chat yesterday loose, when huh? I said, "Why is it that every sniper gets shot when he's pissing? Just never piss." What, yeah, when yeah, we're yeah. talking about uh, sniper we were, elite, that was right? Our, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were, <laughs> all the it's just like it's the apparent guy they have you that that's how you a, die. So just never. Yeah. People are walking around with distended you're, bellies. You're diaper, a grunt. Diapers, if you're like, hey, lives. I'm a grunt. I'm a grunt, and I work for this bad guy. Just never piss, dude. Yeah, or just pee yourself never. and deal with or it. Or don't piss out like up <clears> the edge of a cliff, dude. Like, just go yeah, looking yeah, back you, towards like yeah. the. Yeah. Whenever you tell Goldeneye. your friends in a game you're going to the bathroom, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah Goldeneye, that's where it came up. All the games where that character, you know, is like shaking off his willy. <laughs> or yeah. Yeah. alternatively, well, one, you could wear diapers. Great option. <laughs> Two, you could <laughs> look great at your friend. Keep eye contact at all times while pissing towards your friends. Make oh sure God, you keep an no. eye on your friends while Negative. you're... Come on. If you're dude, in the dude, trench and you look over and... Johnny's staring we, at you while he's peeing. That's uncomfortable. Dude. We've all played Splinter Cell and killed the guard who's peeing because he's not looking at his friends. Every we've killed his now. friends. Yeah. Dude, whenever uh -huh. they make a stealth game, they need to make the enemies go like this. Like they're standing in one direction. Constantly they have to go like. Yeah, right. And constantly you know I mean? be on alert. At like random pa times. Paranoid. Random times. Yeah, you I got to yeah, admit. Yeah. It'll make the game admit. trash, but it'll be. <laughs> it would also be talked about everywhere if a game comes out in the future where that does happen. You know it yeah. would be. So, like, let's yeah. say the next game you're playing and you get ready to shoot and the character looks back and is all nervous. I bet you that would be talked about a lot. People being like, I was getting ready to f look at this guy, you know, and he's like, 
oh, oh, what's that sound? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that dude became a member. Thank you very much for becoming a member of the channel. Like I said, it helps you get into Discord and it helps us. That's we don't literally do, his name. We don't dude. do stuff. Yeah, that dude. Yeah. We don't do, uh, we don't do, what do you call it? So we don't do ads or anything. So I agree. Let's see. Doom says, I really want Lords of the Realm to return. Lords of the Realm. Doom of the who? Lords of What's the Realm. Lords of the, uh, I don't know Lords what Lords of the, of the Realm, Realm is. Lord is that an oh it's an old uh strategy game old strategy game gotcha yeah that, I, you guys I think are with... old oldies in the chat we got an old audience they are but remember what did i talk about yesterday the original age of wonders so it's not like it sort of fits <laughs> that the fans are talking about that and that's what we talk about that um i talk about gex the gecko all right yeah true. Up here. oh dude or yeah. croc 3do croc 3DO, Croc. the Zelda on, on 3DO. 3DO was that system, like we joke about, Neo Geo and 3DO. You knew you made it when you, when you had one of those. <laughs> Just the like, pricey, expensive yeah, they're price. right. It's like when your friend says, when you're like, I got a Genesis, and they're like, I got a Neo Geo, you're like, oh, so your parents oh. well off? You got some lottery money <laughs> over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. In Brazil, that was the, uh, uh, the Game Boy Advance, I want to say, the one that came after the collar. That like oh, was a really? bit smaller, looked great. Yeah, mm -hmm. that because was really expensive in Brazil, and you know you you were a rich kid if you had that. And I remember hating everybody who had that because I you know I never got the chance to. So yeah. We were asked by somebody in chat if we played the Maisma Chronicles or Maisma Chronicles, and I own it. It's from the creators of Mutant Year Zero. Oh, I have it, and I've played fifteen. No, more like. I'll go back to 10, maybe 10 hours of it. I don't necessarily like their idea of, you know how some turn-based games just feel different? I felt that, I don't know if you guys remember, but Mutant Chronicles just didn't, I, it didn't resonate with me. Very, yeah, there was a zero, lot of, yeah. yeah, Mutant Year Zero, thank you, I'm sorry. And, and I had a lot yeah, of issues, though, at launch. It did, but it just, their way of doing things didn't really appeal to, it just felt different. It's different than XCOM, it's different than it's like very fast time to kill. And you remember you had where it was like, I can't remember, but there was some issue, not issues, but the way you control the characters just wasn't for me. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that game's that game's out. I don't know if anybody in our chat who I've seen play it. Have you guys played it? Maisma Chronicles? Neither one of no. you? No. Okay. I didn't know it was a uh, thing. No, I, I thought Mutant Year Zero had some really interesting aesthetic ideas, like the duck character. The right. Yeah. Uh, you know, look pretty unique. They had some cool stuff, but... Yeah, it, it didn't. It's hard should, to do a, a good, you know, turn based. It is hard. Based. It is hard. We think it's easy, but we've seen that um, Lamplighters League, Midnight Suns. Yeah. A couple uh, what's of these the other games. one we played, Carrick, as well? The, the espionage <laughs> vibe. Phoenix? I don't. No. I don't remember. Phoenix it? something, but that one was rough as. Yeah, it's that rough. one was the same way. Yeah, I remember. And then there was the other one I was playing with Takedown where the bad guys could see you across the map. And so you'd oh. be here, and unless you took your cursor and went every single turn, went all the way around, they, I mean, it was it was just so janky. You know, it's it is hard to do. I mean, we tease it a lot of times because something's something's wrong with a a, a turn based games, but they're they're pretty difficult. They feel like a good game for an indie company to get into, though. Like if, if yeah. we decided to make a game, I feel like turn based would be a very good. Um, because we also have complaints, 99% chance to hit for a snake mm -hmm. and you miss. It's like, what could you do as a gamer to alleviate that oddity? You know, there are things you could do and it would be fun as a new gamer, like the unreal blueprints and stuff. I don't know if you guys have been talking to Reg, but he was showing me by using downloadable, uh, bitmaps and stuff from different websites and free stuff to put his game idea together. He had a game running and like. You know, I saw couple, that. That a, a was really cool. So. Like a, yeah. a a Mega Man type. It was like Moon Knight or thing. Moon Knight Mega Man mixed together kind. Of, yeah, or I think it's Moon yeah. Knight, the the one that you guys like, the two D scroller with the guy with the big helmet. But yeah, it was it was awesome to see. Oh, um, uh, yeah, I know the one you're. You're you know saying the one I'm talking about. It's not Moon Knight. That's the damn DC. Character. Are you talking about Moonlighter? Like the no no no. no. The, uh, it's the one. It's the two D Castle Metroidvania style game with the that character sells? with the big hel with the no, big helmet. Other one. He's got the, it's mostly blue. Sounds... No, the, the oh, one you really blue. like, I think, Abzi. I think you like it too. Yeah. Or, or Big you guys head character, white, yeah. like. Earthworm Jim. 
<laughs> God, that's, that sells. Ah, that sells has the big. Uh, um, the somebody in chat will get it. We shovel knight. Thank you very much, powder cake. Well, no, I don't knight. think it's. Uh, no, no, no. Oh. We were thinking about hollow knight. Yeah, Hollow Knight. I don't like Hollow Knight. Hollow, well, yeah. Hollow Knight is a good game. I just never, I wasn't, I'm yeah. not a Hollow Knight guy. Like, you know, there's oh, a lot of okay. people. I, I thought I'm you not, were. Not a, my bad. No, nah, I'm okay. I like, I think it's good. I just, uh, yeah. it's not my favorite game. Like, some Johnny, people's, yeah. you did not track perfectly what Abzi likes. Shame on you. Minus yeah, one shame for on you. From now I on, I need to gonna, update my, my dirty your Rolodex notebook. of what people have said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, High, High Flyer says, ACG, did you have a good laugh over Ubisoft's pricing scheme? No, no, nope, it's exactly what I expected. It's normal price, but they have premiums. They have the weird premium stuff. It's the it same shit, dude. Everyone's been doing it for like a decade. Why is it? Yeah. This is, is old, it, old news, man. Is it everyone's just been, like premium? Dude, remember, like remember the Lux Saints edition? Row? Yeah, Sorry. Saints Row had like a one million dollar edition back in the day. Um, right. The one that thing I would say game, is though. that while I bitch about statues, it doesn't come with some, and so you get the digital thing where it's like you get this customization, you get this, you get this, and I complain because I don't want the statue version, right? Like, mm. I, I just find that weird that they're combined. But this one just adds, like, uh, uh, a lot of customizations for your ship and, you know, that kind of stuff. But it's got a normal priced one. So, no, it doesn't It doesn't surprise me at all. It's exactly it's exactly what I expect from most It's the same conversation games. Games. Yeah. over yeah. and over and over and over for years. Yeah, but, I mean, that's fine. Also, we always say new people are coming in. Oh, that some people, hey, on that, be on that first, topic, though, you guys touched it, on on something on Wednesday about the early access for premium editions or like deluxe editions. Oh, that does have that. Yeah, sorry. That yes, does correct. have that, Continue. right? It does. Uh, mm -hmm. And now when I was hearing you talk about it, you were saying like, yeah, it makes sense. But, you know, it sucks that it breaks the when everybody's jumping at yep. the same time and you have that. Uh, I completely agree with that. But it's a, don't you think that's also kind of hurting the games? Yes. I don't know. Do you think it helps or hurts? I, I got to take that back. I don't know if I said it makes sense. I just it, I feel like I said I ex, ex, I, I think I Abzi it. said the making said like the making sense part. To be fair, but I mean it, 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 it's it's something that no one wants, but it makes sense that they would do it to capture the FOMO of playing early. So making yeah. sense is not selling it or not saying it's okay. Because you're going to get people who are like, oh, if, if it makes sense, then you're a bad person. No, it makes sense. I get it why I, they're doing it. Yeah. I hate it. I get why people do do early access. I've been burned by it too much. That's that's all. It's just that but, you, it, it, it makes sense. But do, do you think that if they it? consolidated everybody, like, okay, like the entire player base is playing day one together, maybe that's also like a business benefit to like drive the people talking about it and playing with each other and every single like, company makes their choices and will never know how the other choice would have affected them you can't go back in yeah time. you can't a b yeah. test like yeah so you me if we run a company we probably would never do early access and we would probably never do three day early per it would it, it is against whatever we like in our game but I can't sit here and say I want devs to be able to do whatever they want and then be mad about it when they do. I mean, I can be <laughs> mad. But what I mean is I can't be, like, surprised by it. So Fair. Because I yeah, do it's... expect it. I hate it. I love the idea of you guys. I even like, by the way, I'm such a nerd. I like it when we all get the same release time, too. When Australia's playing early, I'm like, Let's go. sink Australia, man. New Zealand, what the hell? You know, I'll take advantage of it by getting a code early. And but some people think, like, hey, if that. it was me, I wouldn't be doing this, right? And then, you know, they, they start a business, for example, and get to that level and they're like, wait, I kind of have oh. to do this. You know, this mm -hmm. happens a yeah. lot with businesses where it's like, hey, I can do it better than this. Why is this person using this technique or this thing? You know what I mean? And then you get to that level and you're like, oh, shit, I, I can't. You know? Yeah. I mean, we see a multi-billion or million dollar companies. Especially or what when have you have you a fiduciary and... responsibility. You have yeah. shareholders, public, you know, it's public. Yeah, if you're it. public, it's, I mean. I mean. Yeah, it's done though. <clears throat> the reason why I rarely say if it's public is because people who aren't public still do it. So it's just like whatever. They still you know, do. It yeah, is, some do, it is, but that's their it's choice. A choice. That's the, it's, it's the a thing choice. with public is that you, it's it's you kind of don't have it. I mean, you technically do, but you you do have to uphold that responsibility to to shareholders and get with the market and do other market practices and 
You know, yeah, the market they're... practices have changed pretty, pretty dramatically, which it sucks. Yeah. It sucks because I don't like that. I don't I mean, there's a lot of stuff I don't like, but I'd rather talk about like the things that it are are able to be stopped than yeah. the situations we're already deep in. Like there's some things. And it's not stopped things because I worry it is about, making them money. It is making them more money. That is the reality, even though a lot of people bitch about it. Yeah. yeah. Um. But back to, so we answered his question, back to Kingdom Come. So you're looking at Kingdom Come, it's probably going to be a 60 or $70 game from them looking at their past. I do have to say, if you haven't played Kingdom Come's DLC, you've missed out. They've got some amazing, very unique DLC. You should never say very unique. It's got, it's either, it's already unique. Innovative, just say it, innovative. Yeah, very unique. But I, I say it all the time and I'm like, dude, it, it just, you know. It's it enough with the unique. You don't need No, that. no, it's very unique isn't really a thing. If it's unique, it's unique. You know, like it I, is, I, yeah, it's yeah. already used. Um, well, you know, it's a spectrum. I, like, I think, I'm just kidding, I'm just I think that, that people slept on the DLC for Kingdom Come. And that there's a lot of experiences in Kingdom Come if you're hoping to jump into Kingdom Come or if they announce the release date and it's a while out. Now would be a great time where we're at a, at a dead, a more dead time frame for games or specific games may not appeal to you. For example, I see a lot of people say, well, everybody should be playing Stellar Blade, but that doesn't work. You know, there's a, every game has people who just aren't a fan of whatever's going on. Kingdom Come, if you like number one, and you haven't done the DLC, I would suggest you go and see if you can get it cheap. I'm sure it is cheap, right? I'm 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 assuming yeah. I haven't checked the price on that, but I would yeah, assume you that can, you can probably get yeah. a complete edition for, for cheaper. Um these price hikes will only increase piracy and hurt the industry. Well, they're not really price hikes. You can choose. Get the sixty dollar one. That's not a price hike. Also, I, I sorry, I just I'm never gonna sit here and say piracy is cool or piracy is justified. Like ju you're not playing the game. Just don't play the move on um yep. there's a difference between being mad at a price and being like i'm gonna you know take it Steal. It's just, it's, yeah. yeah it's just a weird situation there i'm praying they change the garbage combat system are, are you talking about dude there's a lot of people who did not like kingdom comes they're bad all system. of them are bad no um yeah i mean it's i i told you already it's not gonna it's 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 definitely it will feel clunky especially at first especially if they didn't play it for a long period of time because it does get better over time and you do yep. get better and you learn to like it or whatever but it's just one of those combat systems where you know at, at first glance it's just gonna be clunky and and it's gonna feel bad and you're gonna not you're not gonna do well at all a man i think it's fine armor also feels say, different you know yeah but okay. i love it it's also I love that fine to say that it's a very opinionated system in a way like they had a very that's particular I, idea yeah it's so that like that's what you i'm know, saying it's very divisive combat system it's not like normal normal games you know what i mean right but what i heard you saying is that when you got good you know it became really rewarding and i think even for some people and, and it does, but I think even for some people, like, it's just not their jam. Yeah, sure. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I, I guess my warning would be don't expect them to change a bunch because that's one of the things that sold the game to so many people. Yeah. That's probably the way that's you should walk away from it and just say, yeah, that's that's definitely the that's definitely the thought process is if it sells it to somebody, there's a good chance they'll continue doing it. Speaking of selling to people, so... Prince of Persia, number one comes out. Okay, so they switch. We hear about one that's coming out. It gets delayed. We get the new one or the the one we didn't know about, and it turned out to be good. Got great reviews. Sold at a good tack uh, and and a good price. I think. You know, I know some people thought it might have been a little expensive, but what have you? It's two D game. People price those differently in their brains. Now we have the brand new Prince of Persia that was shown, uh, just for a bit or announced from the Dead Cell devs, and. Abzi was talking about graphics, ignoring that for a second, because I agree. It is also, I believe, their first game ever to be on early access. Wait, and Dead Cells was on early access, though? No. Ubisoft. Oh, Ubisoft? Mm -hmm. right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. I, right. I, what I mean is, like, this kind of game. I'm sure their MP games were, you know. They've done, like, a beta period for a yeah, week, Yeah, they've done a beta most, period, but I, I but believe this might be like one. Of, or maybe I'm wrong, and it's done in the past, but rarely, I'll just say. I, I feel like most of the time they have a day and date, and they're just like, here you go. But it's the Dead Cells devs. That's what I was getting to, was this is the Dead Cell devs, which they feel that the early access period that Johnny engaged in with Dead Cells is what um, drives them. They're, 
it just it drives the way yeah. they develop a game. And a I'm, lot of that sauce was made from feedback and stuff to, mm -hmm. to be made better and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know, man. Do you guys on a on a game like this? Do you jump in? Let's what's the price you jump into an early access uh, early access 2D game? 29? 30, 20, 30, 29 is a 20, good price. Yeah. Yeah, 2030. Especially because they've proven themselves before, and I love that sells. Um, but personally, I, I, I'm I just not doing that as much anymore because I find myself getting burnt out by the time release comes. I like to go into 1.0 and just fully experience it. It's like uh, sometimes I, I might try it for a couple hours, you know, in early access and support the devs and just wait for full release, which is what I've done in a bunch of games that just got to 1.0 this year, like the Forest uh, sequel and uh, the Vampire game that's coming out soon. Um, yeah. So I might do that, but I'm definitely not going to invest a lot of time in early access anymore. Yeah. yeah. And I think I definitely don't like to engage because I get burned out as well. Even with Baldur's Gate, I played that island for a while and was and I think I did a preview. I got to go see it live and stuff like that. But after that, I just was I shuttled that off. I was like, just I don't want to sit there and go through that a hundred times. And then when the game comes out, you know, will that affect me or will that uh, remove surprise? And also, especially or will if it's I... a story game like that, it's different from well, a roguelike, for example, right? Rogue I was like going to say the repeating. opposite even. What if a mechanic you like is in there and everybody else hates it and yeah. then it gets removed? And that's why you like that early access oh, game. Oh, so. yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm sure it's, it's cool happened to before. see, man. I'm Stellaris sure did that actually. Stellaris. I remember one patch it removed something like a like a certain thing with traveling between stars, uh -huh. um, building different types of. Uh, you you could build those uh, Mass Effect things where you go into to go into other stars like or a whatever. Transit relay of some kind. Yeah, they streamlined something and people just hated that. Um, <laughs> and I remember everyone was like, "Hey, you could you revert back your patch because they let you do that." The devs, which was great, so you could revert back a patch and play. Um, Sorry, one sec. I'll be right back, real quick. That's all right. Sure. No, I'm ex I'm excited to see it. I I probably won't engage in that early access, but I like the idea also of Ubisoft spreading their IP to another company. It's a very interesting situation where they're all okay. It's a cool you know. combo. We yeah. saw something similar, you know, with um, Risk of Rain Two, where they had a small team. The devs were a small team, like two, three mm -hmm. guys, but they worked with uh, Gearbox to create their vision for so to go from you know the first one which was a totally 2d side scroller to the 3d right. thing and that worked out really well too gears of war did uh the gears of war side game with somebody else as well so i mm. like the idea i i can't remember what that's called is that gears of war bullet storm is bullet storm a separate game anyway but there was a side gears of war that wasn't the main you know the main devs at the time so i like the idea Especially if you look at somebody and you're all, they're the masters of this domain. Like, we're not the masters of whatever, but we love the idea of this. And these guys, you know, need some money. They want to keep their development going. Maybe they're at a lull. And you've already looked at their stuff and you're like, these guys are talented. To me, that's that's the best way to keep the industry going is to start. That's the one thing. How many times have you guys, we've all talked about this. Oh, Microsoft is sitting on 100 IPs. Embracer, 100 IPs. Sony, 100 IPs. Where's the new kill zone? Where's the new resistance? Where's the new blah, blah, blah? It's like, well, do you know where it might be? In a smaller dev's hands who's really friggin' good at doing exactly that. Let's just let them go for it and do a, a, a side thing. That's exciting to me. I, I like the idea. I think it just all it does is keep people in employment, too. You know, allows you to keep people around. Do you guys ever, yeah. at your software job, do you guys ever hire contractors within contractors? Or are you the guys who do the last, uh, are you the, we, the peeps? We don't in my company. We uh, hire people full-time mm -hmm. uh, and develop teams. What has happened recently is with the LLM explosion and everything, right. we didn't have a fully built team that was ready to develop, like, you know, high-end, mm -hmm. you know, training models and everything. We had some LLM stuff, but then we did bring in some uh, some people to advise and help build the team. So kind of like consultants in a way. So that does yeah. happen. Here's a word judgment, Brooks says. Thank you, Brooks. I appreciate it. Tactics is also another one that I liked. But yeah, the idea of taking those developers who are good at something may not be working and saying, guys, I got an idea, man. Let's fucking give you some employment. 
and we'll still do our stuff on the side. I'm saying, hey, Splinter Cell, why don't you guys go find somebody who does stealth games, right? And, you know, throw Splinter Cell's IP to somebody. Rowdy says, yo, ACG, big thanks for keeping my sanity at 51% while I walk around on my 12-hour security shift. You guys rock. Thank you very much. Sailor says, I can't believe YouTube just or didn't notify me of the stream. Yeah, YouTube and me, not best friends, man. I don't know. I apologize for that. Uh, Johnny, oh, I was just going to read your own response, Johnny, in, in our chat. I was getting ready to read what you just typed. I was like, what? <laughs> um, dead cells, let's see. That's about that. Oh, my that. God. Uh, from the triple I as well. Sorry, Johnny, did you see the new Risk of Brain update that they announced? I haven't checked it out yet. I know you told oh, me. Free I haven't update. looked into it. Free update. Fuck yeah. Is that the one that, or is that, it Darkest that Dungeon good... that takes the entire world both, and now Darkest both Dungeon free update as well. That's, Darkest Dungeon but, 2 free update no, what that I'm changes is, the game. Yeah, yeah, Darkest Dungeon. Does does Risk of Rain do the same in their update? It adds more uh abilities and 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 maps and stuff. I don't know if it's they're adding a new character. Uh I have to look, but I did see the mercenary have some new moves. It's either the mercenary nice. or a new character, just like the mercenary. Last I'm time they added a mercenary player. New so. levels, a new survivor class. And two new two new survivors, yeah. Yeah, or and two a, lot, yeah. a whole new mechanic, right? A whole new mechanic with the corruption shit. It's yeah, crazy. very good. That update. one was paid for, though. Yeah, that one was a DLC. Uh, rightfully that so. That was, but, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that kind of stuff is... It's exciting to see because I was not expecting that. And I got to admit, Dr Darkest Dungeon I enjoyed, but I never returned. You know, I got my whatever out of it. And to see them just say, hey, whole new mode. We're just like... It's we're awesome, man. I was, Yeah, dude, I was looking at it at the... Because I think it was PC Gamer or whatever. And I was reading it just going like, are you kidding me? That is... That's exciting. That's that game is like, fantastic. That is just intriguing to see. Yeah, I've never. I yeah. don't think I've seen that other than both, like No both, Man's Sky or something where they just I change like is, everything. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. What I like is that they both games are com very, very different gameplay styles. Like you mm -hmm. can still play the first game and have fun. You you don't have to play the sequel because the sequel is a complete. It was sequel is a roguelike, and the first game is like an XCOM kind of thing where you, you manage a lot of your guys. They get stressed out. You do all that stuff. And um, and it captures both audiences, and I love both. Uh, and this third thing, this new update, seems to be another type of game. I didn't look into it too much, but it seems to be like just a completely different different thing. That was the Triple I initiative, right? Yeah, that that, that, was that conference at? was great, or that that um, yeah, their their thing was really good. They had a lot of neat stuff, dude. I'm telling you, they're not the only <laughs> Ooh, ones. Wizard like... of Legend too. Have you played Wizard of Legends? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that that one. It's I like played a bit. It was a hard game. game. I I I couldn't. Uh, well, I didn't put a lot of time into it, but yeah, it was cool. What I was gonna say was that with Triple I Initiative, they're not the only devs and publishers looking at doing their own events. And I I I, mm -hmm. I honestly, we said this last Friday. We said it on Wednesday, but everybody's looking and smartly and late. Weirdly enough. They're all looking at trying to combine and sort of collab as thing. And by the way, this is how this works. So it's not going to stay this way. But I do want to point something out. When YouTube channels aren't doing the best, sometimes you see a lot of collabs or a lot of changes to things and different stuff being blossomed because it, 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 that doesn't always happen when you're doing well because your brain doesn't think about doing well. It thinks about continuing online. When your back is against the wall is when you start biting people, right? And you start like figuring stuff out. So these guys doing this, they're not the only ones who are looking at the industry going, oh, we got to change up. You know, for example, I think a lot of people just kept thinking E3 was going to come back. They just, oh, it, it's because of this. It's because of that. And it's not, it was all these problems that collapsed on E3. And it was, it was like the isolation. It was the business practices, everything. So the triple A or triple I initiatives there, you, but you have these companies who don't want to be beholden to, let's say, Summer Games Fest or even to a Steam thing, or to uh, the Game Awards or whatever. I love it, man. I want more. Because I, I know people love watching gamers play on Twitch, but I got to tell you, I would much actually rather have a bunch of events each month that were a bunch of people showing their games on Twitter that I could just log into and go, you know, that's why I like the Sony events. I like the Nintendo Directs. I like Microsoft's events because it's just well, them, yeah. you know, just Plus shows one of the stuff. biggest. Yeah, the one of the biggest things that's happening that's been happening recently is that the barrier between the barrier of communication between devs and gamers is getting yeah. 
smaller and it's, it's breaking down for better or for worse, yeah, right? Right. Uh, you're, you're seeing a lot of them in PR people in subreddits or devs in subreddits. You're you're seeing them on Twitter. Twitter accounts for large, large companies like Xbox or whatever are becoming more humanized, you know, more, uh, yeah. you, you, they, they say jokes and memes, post memes or whatever, they respond to people. That That is a really, really good thing, but it could also be a bad thing. But that's like one of the biggest things that's happening is that uh, the, the online social media influencing thing where where you just get a ton of followers and you can just speak directly to all of them. You know, you don't need that third party anymore. I, you know? I think you were here. It could have been the one Johnny and I did, but the one thing that's always bothered me is when people upload the trailer from the developer and they're getting way more views than the developer whose little YouTube channel is also going to do an update tomorrow and the next day, but maybe that influencer won't take those yeah. videos and put them up. So the, I, I'm always like, go, please go to the developer, you know, mm -hmm. and you could say it's reaction content where we say, please go to the original YouTuber versus watching the influencer or yeah, the reaction yeah. person. But mm -hmm. I, I do like it when you, I, there's been times where I've gone to a small channel. They've had, 758 subscribers, a thousand views on the trailer, and I go to somewhere else. They have a hundred thousand subscribers. They have a million views, and I'm like, that is great because people are still seeing it. But a lot of times, it's that that one trailer will be shown, and the actual game and that zeitgeist goes away pretty quickly. The discussion about it because that person's just regurgitating trailers or something. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. anything oh, that devs yeah. can do is great. That devs can yeah. communicate with people. Yeah, and what's good is when the influencers. Uh... You know, I've been seeing, especially for indie games, influencers kind of encouraging people, if they, if you like what you see, wishlist it, please, because it really, really does help the devs and brings it, uh, you know, up the Steam algorithm. Dude, wishlisting eyes. is like subscribing and hitting notify all. Yeah, if you do yeah. anything else, it does not really help as much as you yeah. think, because those views yeah. might be on another channel, what have Probably you. Probably better you than pre-ordering. Probably better. Yeah. Um, so looking at this also talking about some cool stuff. Steam Smash Hit. This is from PC Gamer from Morgan Park, who wrote this. Steam Smash Hit content warning sold seven hundred thousand copies after giving away six million. Now that is not a loss, by the way, because those are copies, they're digital copies. It's like you make a PDF, you sell some, you give some free, you're still making money on the ones you made and sold. Seven hundred thousand copies is ridiculous. By the way, there are many huge AAA games that just Pan. And, you know, they may, maybe even if they get reviewed good, don't do 700,000 copies. That's awesome. That is, that's insane for them. It was smart, man. Give it away for free. I never, I don't know if I would have done 24 hours. That's just the honest truth. I, that's all. 24 makes sense because it's a 24 hour world. But if 6 million copies were given away, I bet you other companies who might do this may not be 24 hours. They may be like, eh, let's give it, let's give it 12 and see if people like it because that's a lot. Maybe do it later too. Give some away, have a buy, give them away on the free. We see games given away free all the time on big stores, Epic, GeForce Now, all that kind of stuff. I love it, man. I haven't played the game, but from what I understand, it's a lot like Lethal Company. Is that the, is that the other game that the content warning guys yeah. did? Or, yeah, or, or yeah, it's yeah. like that. Yeah. But it's been, uh, I, That's awesome. these are the type of games I don't enjoy playing myself, but watching people play is really a really, really fun time. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Such yeah. a fun time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, that is absolutely the thing is I, I don't want to play Lethal Company or this one, but I absolutely would spend two hours, you know, eating lunch, doing some stuff around the house, listening to somebody play that yeah. and streaming. And, and content warning. It was clearly made for 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 creators. Oh, you know? oh yeah, it was that was made for, for yeah. entertainers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Elo Games, five dollars super chat. Hey, ACG Johnny and Abzi, I wish. He, uh, I don't want to uh, say he says I wish that it had a decent NG plus. This is DD two. They need to add a difficulty increase. I loved it, that's but crazy I absolutely that they didn't, no? think that's fine. Yeah, that's a, I mean there a is a mod valid. that uh, you can increase values, but like it's it's nicer to have it from the game itself. And like, the consoles wouldn't have the mod either. Yeah, which sucks, maybe right? different enemy looks, types, variants. They pro they probably need more enemy variety in general. Um, hopefully a DLC. I I just love it as a foundation, so it has you know a lot of potential to even grow. Because uh, if you remember DD one without without uh, Dark Arisen, without uh, what was it called the event. Event Fall Island, um, you know, it didn't have an end game or, or much to it. Yeah, it was a weird. Uh, I would say Dragon's Dogma is sort of known for not nailing the ending a little bit. Now, mm -hmm. I I, well, mm -hmm. I won't say two. I think two's ending is, but the some stuff that happens in DD two is like what the yeah. hell. And 
we weren't allowed is like i mean there were, you know there was geez, it's like do not effing say anything yeah, about uh, this uh, and of yeah. course <laughs> magazines wrote about it the very next day but whatever i was like waiting waiting with bated breath and you know why because all you sons of bitches were in my discord saying i got 80 hours i haven't even left the first spot and i'm sitting there going would you would somebody beat it please so we can talk about this <laughs> yeah. <the> end. <laughs> yeah bit bit yesterday was like i'm 78 hours and i have uh you know i've spent like a, a little bit in batal and i'm like dude please just yeah, that was me yeah i spent <laughs> yeah, so much you, time in i mean which is a boon to the game obviously but what i was worried about was that somebody would burn themselves out get their money's worth by far, and then maybe not know that there might be more money's worth and a new yeah. uplift in their interest. M if miss they... out on Yeah, the... it's, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. Yeah. But um, I agree. Difficulty would be great. So I can honestly say this. I've heard the enemy variety thing a couple times for Dragon's Dogma. I see that complaint, but I didn't have the complaint, if that makes yeah. sense. So I've, I don't I've, know another I've, way to say it. I've seen the complaint with Elden Ring as well and with this game. The thing about oh, I, I do get yeah. I do get people's complaints. Obviously, they want to fight different types of big monsters and stuff like way more, you know, have unique new things. But I'm the I, I usually buy into fictions like that. If there's like a world that's really good and then these these are the enemies that you have, I right. buy into the fiction and I don't really mind as much uh the, the enemy variety thing. I didn't mind it in Elden Ring, I didn't mind it here. But I do I do get it. Like you wanna you wanna fight different different types of things. I personally Maybe. thought oh, the go for Johnny. Uh, the the variety for big enemies was quite good. I liked, you know, the I, I don't know. I, I, and then the yeah, uh, the, the Griffin. golems, and there were some oh, variants yeah. and, stuff. and stuff. And you know, some of the optional bosses that were incredible yeah. as There's well. There's a whole element of dynamic stuff that could happen, right? That could change. A there lot is, yeah, or combinations. Maybe you're fighting a Griffin with, you know, uh, yeah. I like that. I think the mobs is where it got a bit more repetitive for me yeah. because Agreed you have a lot of when yeah, they keep yeah, yeah. You know, it, you. it's very dense with enemies, uh, which then coupled with while well, you're fighting a lot of the same ones in some areas, like it's a lot of goblins in some, and then they shake it up in other places, which is interesting. Some places you have like a great sword user enemy and then a thief. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they actually mix yep. it up. In, but some areas are pretty stale where you're pretty much fighting goblins day in, day out until you, you know, get past. I wonder if they a have certain... a difficulty with the ability to kite enemies so much in that game. And they're a little nervous about the balance because I had a glitch, I think. I'm going to fully say it's a glitch, but I had three griffins. And that was a ridiculous, unbelievable. I, I was, it, <laughs> yeah. was, it was anarchy, it, but then I had armored goblins. So touching the ground was hot lava. You know, the game you used to play as a kid where you're running on the couch. And I was like, if I got to the ground, the armored goblins were weirdly difficult for me at times where sometimes those guys are blasting you and pushing Plus you. Plus you don't have poise at all if you're not a warrior. So yeah, you're just you're not a on yeah. the ground flailing. But I, yeah. get, I definitely would love to. I, I don't know if I would want new enemies in those places what i think might help a dragon's dogma is an expansion that has a new road that goes to uh, lava lands or something you know like i'm just making things up s s swamps snow, true swamps region. snow and then what you do there is you introduce that extra level of difficulty because i loved when you were fighting the lizard guys and then they're armored and that first time your sword bounces you're like yeah whoops oh. that's yeah. gonna cause some issues yeah because dude and i would love I would a dungeon crawling thing like a big a dungeon you would know. be, yeah, because they definitely, that's Dragon's Dogma to a T. The couple dungeons you go into are unique. They're their own thing. Maybe have an enemy inside. Maybe have a different situation that you're not expecting to see. There's not a ton. There's not a ton. Yeah, and there's a ton what, of caves that are pretty big, but but not but a lot But they're not of dungeons, you know. Yeah, dungeons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, uh, I get it. I think that, I think the... I also wonder how long somebody plays before they get to that complaint. Because I did just talk to a friend who beat it after about 50 hours, and they did not have any complaints about enemy variety because they weren't doing 87 hours in the first spot or something. Yeah. But it's this weird thing where you hear somebody do 87 hours, and if they complain about enemy Plus variety, I'm like, easy what were you doing end, for 87 right? hours? Yeah. Because you out-level everything. Yeah, yeah. I didn't find the combat difficult per se, and per person, it's when I kited enemies. Mm -hmm. And and I did a lot because the way I play. And man, I would be... Doo -doo -doo -doo, and I'd run and go, uh-oh, I'm pretty sure I just heard a sword clank off a lizard man. 
And that's going to make that dip. And then you have the griffin who's picking up your pawns and dropping them on rocks. And you're like, oh, my God, this went to shit. That's the greatest thing about that game, though, is it just it goes to shit so quick shit in a good way. It goes to yeah. it so quickly that the escalation is like a real fan. We don't see that in fantasy movies even. It's usually like there's the bad guys. We're fighting them. But the escalation of almost reinforcements of monsters in that game. We're like, da -da 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 -da. oh, no, I just... I walked over this cliff and there's a bad guy waiting there. Yeah. I agree game, very man. much with that. I had that experience a lot of times where I felt completely in control, like cocky, you know, mm -hmm. dude, I'm unbeatable here. And literally like around the next corner, it became night. And now yeah. you have, oh, that's true too. Yeah. The oh, nighttime. now you have more enemies. Now you have the skellies that only die, you know, when you crush their skulls. And you have like spellcasters, Kellys, and everything. And when they stack up in the back and you can't get to them and your entire party dies, and guess what? Now you can't resurrect them because they, you get interrupted, right? Yeah. So your only choice is to like single handedly get through all the enemies and then go. Anyway, some epic. I experiences dude there. i don't know about you guys but mutators were one of my favorite things in unreal and i really wish they'd come back in games because do you know what i'd love i'd love for dragon's dogma to add some mutators like d d deadly knights it's just called like deadly modifiers knights. That yeah, type of stuff. yeah yeah mutators yeah, yeah. basically yeah, took is... one particular thing and we've seen it in other games doing this i don't want to say they're the only ones in fact we've seen some recent games but it's really a lot of times the mutate the best part about the mutator is it wasn't always affecting the entire time. So like for Dragon's Dogma, if you had deadly knights, that means the days would be pretty normal, but the nights would be quite risky. And I don't mean deadly as in um, more. I mean like, you know, what if just like the zombies and stuff, they're like super strong at night and you get that different feel. I like that idea. I think I think elites. mutators would I like be the great. idea of elites. Yeah. So like elites maybe, you know, you have a Green, chance glowing, of getting dog, elites. You know, skeleton eyes maybe yeah, or something. Like red, red eyes. And, yeah. Either maybe they're more powerful, they could also be immune to magic, uh, as an, I don't know, an example, you know, like they could have modifiers like that. And the cool thing is maybe they only show up, uh, for example, at night, you know, uh, yeah. but then you also have maybe you gain a lot of XP from them. So you have like a trade off. Of Thank you very to much, Nines, for them. giving us uh, some some members. I absolutely appreciate it. I'm going to. Fix that number there. We'll move on from Dragon's Dogma because we have talked about it a lot in the last coming months. Nobody's bitched yet, but I'll jump yep. in here before <laughs> before people do complain. Dev guy was gifted a membership. It's like that's the one problem with with random memberships is sometimes the guy who's already got a membership gets one or who's already got like Discord access. People are talking about saying they liked Sekiro for for the enemy variety and stuff. I guess I I didn't find that game to have a ton of enemy variety, but I did like. No, it really didn't. Like for the basic guys, it. Didn't have that much. Dying Light had stronger enemies at night. Yep, those are great. That kind of stuff is awesome. Dead Rising is such a sweet game. It goes on sale regularly on PlayStation for like 5 or $10. Yeah, Dead Rising is amazing. Moving on from there, let's talk about Remnant 2. Another game that's just like this with the randomness. Remnant 2 is getting another DLC. And Ooh, nice. it didn't get slept on, but I am still surprised it's not talked about at all times. Because that game is... Really That's going to be a banger, man. A good yeah. DLC for that game. Yeah. For sure. They're just very good at making... They're very good at making changes because when you look at one, they had a lot of problems, man. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. One did not nail it near as much as I was hoping. And two, it's almost like a little like early access where one was treated as early access. And they're all, all right, these are the things we need to fix. And man, I think they fixed them. And twos, I don't know about you guys, twos, uh, did you guys notice twos, at least for me, the co-op just worked. I mean, we had the occasional, you know, you might get a disconnect. I don't know Johnny and I played a going. ton. You didn't have any no. issues? Yeah. No. We played a ton. I think Johnny and I only like had one. And it works. I don't even know if we had a disconnect. It works very well because each campaign is a, a, a new thing. So you new do seed. one yeah. person's campaign, another person's campaign, another seed. Like, it's all about that. So it works really, really well. It was also... I don't know if I love this. I, I think I will never know the answer because I don't want to really dive into it. But there were, I will say that there were worlds, when you did the Mass Effect world, I call it that, but the futuristic looking one. Um, I would have liked one more world seed, I think. One more planet type, one more location I think, type. Yeah, that would be good if they add, I don't know if yeah. they have said, 
what they're doing, but a new. I don't know either. Yeah, a new seed, a new. Because area. I don't know about you guys, the jungle one got a little samey. I agree the, with you. The, yeah, the, with that those was the guys quickest the one that got a bit old. Right. Right. Yeah. But dude, they did awesome. Weapons are cool. The way it works is cool with co-op. Um, the it's just and when you get a weapon because you know it's like custom, when you get it, it's gnarly. You know, you know that that thing is probably going to be a big update to your character's abilities, which I yeah, really either like. weapon or uh, skill on a weapon or skill. that's unique yeah. to a boss. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, that was cool. And the only thing is, is there's, you know, one boss that needs to be removed from the game. That's it. That's yep. the only thing I'll yep. say. Frankie Agreed. Donuts member for three months. What up, guys? What are we looking forward to play in the next couple months? Also, cheers to the best Gat Dam podcast around. Thank you very much. Um, what's one game? Let's Let's go far out. Let's not talk about, like, Stellar Blade or anything. Let's go past Stalker, even. Is there something that... It could be Elder Elder Scrolls or whatever. Is there something far away that's been announced? So we already are... talked about Hellblade Two. That's in May. So yep, like Hellblade beyond two. that, or yeah, let's go beyond that. I mean, if you guys don't track those, because I have a difficulty tracking them, that's also fine. But I'm saying, is there something Final Fantasy uh, uh, eight Shadow, Shadow of the Earth oh, Tree seventeen Shadow of the Earth Tree this year? Right, that's a good one. Does it feel like Shadow's not talked about as much? Does it feel like that? Yeah, Do, it's died it, down for sure. Died, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I guess it'll come back the moment that game comes out, you know, or that deal. I comes think out. so. Yeah. Any from you, Abzi? Any far so, out games? like Other than GTA 6? Or Kingdom Come now? <laughs> or Kingdom Come Kingdom <laughs> yeah. Come 2 GTA Stalker. It's like my Stalker. top, 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 top. What about Frostpunk 2? That's July. Are you guys? Yeah, Frostpunk yeah, I love Frostpunk. Yeah. I love yeah. Frostpunk. Yeah. I love Frostpunk. I can't wait to see their new, uh, their new fuck. What is it called? The clone game, not clone. Alternates. Alternates. Yeah. What is it uh, called? Uh, uh, altered. They're not clones. Alternates. They're like they come from. It's like a multi different dimensions thing. of you. Right. So yeah. so cool. So Multiplicity. Cool. The game. <laughs> Coming Enders? out this year. What, what is it called? Alder alters. I alters. It's Sorry, alters, it is alters. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's alters. Yeah. For me, it is. Um, so now that we've sort of got confirmation of some of the Assassin's Creed stuff, the Aztec is coming, that kind of stuff. The one I'm interested in the most is still the it it it's not that I want to see or that red is magically more interesting to me because it's uh, you know, Japan. That actually is not I'm interested in it, but we saw it with some other games and stuff, which is cool. But what I want to see there's supposed to be two protagonists, choosable, probably not modifiable too much when it comes to their look or what have you. But I want to see what they do with verticality because I was playing Valhalla a couple days ago and then I was playing Odyssey and Origins and both have some verticality. Certainly Valhalla has some. And Odyssey did too because you could buy a skill to not die when you fell. You know, obviously you needed it. Or, or obviously they felt some people needed it. But I'd, I, I just get this idea of, you know, climbing ancient Asian you know, temples and shit like that, or castles on some high rock and, you know, going in there and it's stealth, more stealth in red than we probably get in some of the I hope other it's Assassin's not as Creed. Flat as the last few. That's what I, I hope mean. it's I, not I, as. If, if it is, dude, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of verticality there that can be used. And I'm, that, that's my idea is like it's seeing like a forest castle. again. Like we've seen right. forests and shit so many times. I mean, it'd be great if they're there, but the verticality in some of those places seems like it could be really awesome. And Rise of the Ronin did not uh, appeal to me in that way. They unfortunately didn't have a ton or as much as I would like. So I'm actually looking forward to see what they do with Red. Just see what Ubisoft, after all these games, Valhalla doing so well. They need to make so combat well, better. Their combat they need, is trash. And they need to make it feel like a ninja, unlike yeah. the non-Viking Valhalla. They need clings and clans and shit. Yep. And they need, like... The things that you in your brain blow guns, you know, or samurai, you need to have the stuff that fits those characters where when you swing and attack, it's not just a katana you're now using, it's that you feel like a warrior of that kind. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm really interested in I mean, it, it's something I'm looking forward to, but I haven't loved many of their games day one. So it's just sort of if I and feel they like they need to fix their their parkour man, their parkour system. Please. Parkour system and combat are just so janky parkour. and floaty. 
Yeah. What's your level of excitement yeah. for Wukong in August? Oh, very high. Sorry, Wukong, very high. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, that looked really interesting. Yeah, Space Marine 2, somebody mentioned, for sure. I've got hands on on at least one of those, and I'm very excited for both of those, for sure. W hands on Black always Myth. sounds a little creepy, like, got your got pounds hands on, on no. it. Yeah. Uh, Space Marine 2, um, that kind of world and Space Marines and Warhammer, they nailed it with number one to the point of just being, and it's been a long time, guys, since Space yeah. Marine 1. Like, that is 360 days, so, you know. Did they have a date for that one? Up. Or is uh, it like yeah, fall? Yeah, they delayed it to fall. fall. I thought they did a date, but you know they may have just said fall on that. They may have just said I'm fall. I'm seeing September here. September well, that's 9th. That's a good month because it's not coming out in August where we just got, what do you call it, announced for August. So And then September 5th is Stalker 2. September 9th and September 5th? Yeah. Those are different enough games. I think Stalker so. Stalker 2 and what? And, Stalker uh, Space Marine 2. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Elo Games, I've become a member. How do I get Discord access? It should move you over to Patreon. We have a bunch of people from YouTube who have Discord access currently, and it should assign it to you. You can also look up online, uh, Google online, and you can see uh, the steps to do it. But yeah, we have a bunch of people right now who are YouTube members who are in the Discord. In fact, it's been really cool to be able to see people from different places coming in. Just don't shit it up. That's all I'm saying. Shrek says, getting to climb and jump on things is so fun. Verticality lets you make the game a platformer. Uh, I guess it does, but that brings us back to the parkour. I don't feel they've ever hit parkour right. That's the honest truth, man. I, I, I mean, some of them have been better than others. I know a lot of people like Unity's, but Unity had so many other issues, it was hard to concentrate on the parkour. I don't know how they fix their parkour either, because you also get a samurai in armor, and if I sit here and complain that it doesn't feel like a samurai in, in combat, if I am in combat being a samurai, then climbing around doesn't make sense. So no matter what, I'm going to be lost. It, it's a game. Yeah. It's a game, Carrick. Just assume it's a game. Uh, with parkour, do you guys want it to be a button for up and down? Or do you want it to be a button to climb and use the direction pad? Because that always comes up too. Like, do you want it to be discreet on up and down? Because I do have a problem in some of those games where I'll drop to my death, I'll hit the wrong button. Yeah. You know, if the game if the game allows that kind of stuff, do you, what, like what do we want for parkour in Assassin's Creed? What mm. would be the improvement? Better collision detection, obviously. Aiming in the air. Do you want it to be safe? And by the way, that's not a that's a that's great not question. A, that's not a diss. I'm saying, do you want it to be to where your character doesn't leap diagonally yeah. slightly and dies? Remember. We were talking about uh, Lara Croft in Shadow of the Shadow. Tomb Raider. I yeah. had some of those things turned off, and it was a death clip simulator for me of her just yeah. dying in different ways, which was fun. But, of course, like you said, you also want it to be fluid, don't you? Mm -hmm. I think, like, the feeling of getting good at the parkour would be awesome if maybe when you start off it's difficult. You know, like, cl almost clunky, like we said, but you can get some mastery on it and then feel rewarding do you know what would be amazing guys ninjas or samurai with the claws on their hands and you're able to climb up places you normally can't or some you know where like you can make a handhold yeah. where you normally wouldn't have a handhold in a game that would be very cool i hope they add papers that fly around that you have to chase it's the best part of all assassin's creed games whenever the papyrus pops up and you have to chase oh my Fucking hate god that. i hate it man I, they just can't do it. They just can't, they got to remove it. Uh, JC says, "Have you played House Flipper 2? Yes, I did and reviewed it. Uh, let's see what else. Mirror's Edge Catalyst was good. This uh, time to go. Joe says, you "Guys, play, do you guys remember anything about that game?" I, I only played, played the first. The first game. Yeah. Oh, first same. one. Okay, gotcha. Did you guys? Was it for the graphics or the parkour? Which did you like? like graphics. Right. Yeah. I think that's why. I'm no, no, it. I I uh, I played it and replayed it and replayed it as a kid on my Xbox 360 because it was oh, really? uh, it was fun to go through the levels, go as fast as you can. Now that you know the levels and uh, add really good parkour uh, systems, where yeah. as Johnny said, you can get good at. It's not like a Assassin's Creed where you press press a direction and. But Assassin's Creed isn't that type of game. But you know, I like that way more. Just something with a skill ceiling on it, like being like being better at it is rewarding. That's really cool. Do yeah. you think what else they could do is maybe have the spot 
at the starting, a little like where Valhalla had its own little landmass, and then you went to the main landmass? What if in Japan, they start you on a spot that just slowly teaching you climbing just by the way it is? Dude, if they you give know? us a grapple hook, so help me God. You're going to yeah, like it? Too or excited you're going to dislike about it? No, yeah, I'm going to... Dude, everyone's oh. doing it. <laughs> It's yeah, like, it's okay, okay Takiro did it, and then and then fucking the Tsushima Tsushima did it, and then Bryzer Ronin, and then it's like, bruh, do all these samurais? Is, was it a was just samurais? Did they have grappling hooks back they in the day? They absolutely like, did to go over fortifications, but it wasn't what you see in <laughs> you know, not. it wasn't a ratchet that goes like <laughs> and pulls you off. It was just to climb up over, hook it up, climb over. You know, eleven to twenty-two feet of rope, and just that was it. Give us a jetpack, man. Just give us a jetpack. Oh dude, come man. on! If there was a medieval jetpack that just ran on fucking... like fermented rice sake or something, I mean, there's going crazy here. Apparently. There's flamethrowers <laughs> and 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 uh, Japan. Right, so. rise of the Ronin. Yeah, yeah flame there's flamethrowers. Flame there. Put them downwards, and and uh, we're also probably gonna see a parry mechanic. I'm already getting anxiety because it's gonna be like parry based. That that's like. Yeah. Every game now. Yeah. Every game. I think it depends on what the what fighters is. What type of parry, what type of fighters, because parrying wasn't in some fighting, you know, circles, parrying wasn't as used as much for certain things. Also, putting blade to blade ruins your blade. It, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they go for realistically. I think yeah. Ubisoft will probably play it safe in that the world will be highly porn, you know, world porn. That we expect, you know, amazing looking places. They've taken pictures. They've sent their people. They've done all that. And then they'll probably, I'm hoping they they hinge a tiny bit more on it, making it feel like that character. And then the weapons from that area, I don't want to be replicated in Valhalla, Odyssey, or Origins. The side weapons. Mm -hmm. The, You know, I, if you have ninja stars, great. If you have throwing blades, great. But make them, I don't know how you would do it, but make them really impactful like maybe you only get a couple but instead of being that last ditch barely hurt the guy i want to throw that thing into somebody's neck and I just should, smoke the we should just make a psa to all those if you can't make perry as good as, as sekiro just don't do it <laughs> and, and, and also happy. don't do a big sign that comes up on the screen saying this is red, when you should parry red button red uh, thing on the boss means you gotta dodge blue thing on the boss means you gotta parry green thing on the boss means you gotta jump <laughs> yeah there you yeah. go yeah. Yeah, it's, but, uh, I, I, oh, go ahead. I go was going to ask, did they reveal if we have like one protagonist or like two sex options? It's going to be two. It's going to be two. Do you guys like that? There was even like a leaked that? screenshot. Yes, I do. Yeah. I think the, it worked out pretty well like with it. like Odyssey. Syndicate and Valhalla and Odyssey all it's I Odyssey, felt they were different good. enough that, you know, mm -hmm. each had their... Vine. Yeah, and I know a lot of people like Boryak from Origins. He just wasn't for me. I didn't like that Bo character. Um, <laughs> I, I would have loved a female option in that one, which I normally don't go with just because I, I usually like the male option in whatever game. But I would have loved to seen it there. He was he, he was fine. I just I'm more teasing. But uh, yeah, Syndicate and e Evie and Jacob were the first time I was really like, oh, this I like this actually. I uh, do the like having the duel. Was fantastic. Yeah. With, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see if they can pull it off. We always hope, but then, you know, I usually get let down by their games. It, it, I don't get let down destructively, you know, where I'm like, I hate it. I get let down where the mechanics like Valhalla didn't feel like a Viking. I mean, I really thought when you hit somebody, it was going to be ridiculous, right? And speaking of that, let's Dude, jump to Hellblade 2. wielding giant yeah, hammers. Wheeling, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So did you guys see that they they broken down some stuff? Uh, Digital Foundry broke down some graphic stuff for Hellblade 2, but one of the things they talked about was something we've talked about before, which is that there's a slight pause when you hit the animation, a little bit like Vermintide, so the hits feel much more solid in 2 than they did in 1. And that nice. actually excited me to hear about that. I because normally they cover, Dogma. I love Yeah, it. and normally they usually cover just graphics there, so I was actually quite surprised That's interesting. that they mentioned yeah. it. Must have been noticeable to, like you know, where you feel that hit. Dragon's Dogma did do it, didn't they? But Dragon's Dogma luckily didn't freeze the screen because I've seen games do that where like for yeah, a, the a frame almost it holds, like, almost like a stutter. Yeah, but instead yeah. They, they it seems like there's a, a, on the other hand, you are carrying just a massive sword. So, you know, I, it, it, I think with Hellblade, it'll probably be more up close for the most part, smaller weapons. 
but having a little bit more feedback, fixing some of those things, be what eight hours probably. Set. What, how yeah. long did Hellblade take us? Six and uh, a half, I think, at the time. Yeah, six and a half. Yeah, just, I, yeah. Unless you get Under stuck 10. on a puzzle like me. Oh, dude, I I did for sure. Uh, let's see. Um, Todor says, "I freaking hate parry based games. Dodge for life." Dodge well, versus mm. block versus parry. What do you guys like best? I like when there are interesting trade-offs between the two. So, for example, in Lies of P, uh, you had benefits from parrying because mm -hmm. you got, you know, the stagger meter building up when you did it. Right. You could even break the weapon of the enemy. But um, you it was actually a disadvantage in some cases because it would push you back. So if you perfect parry, you're actually like thrust right. back by the parrying, which then means you can't hit. You mm -hmm. need to now run in back to hit. Does that make sense? It does make uh, sense. But, yeah, I get it. But so you could choose, well, I want the stagger damage, so I'm going to parry anyway. Or you could say, well, no, I value more my DPS, and I'm just going to dodge into the attack and then lay into the boss. So it's almost like a... You know, you can choose based on your playstyle, really, and it makes sense. Um, me, I personally, I'm just burnt fair. out on the kind of just reaction timing shit. Right. You know, I've, I, I, yeah. I like it. I've liked it. I've done a lot of... I've, Elden Ring is one of my favorite games. I mean, obviously, From Software does it best, but all these games coming out where you just have to react to the boss, I'm just... I like to be on the... I, w I want to play a game where... Are you using combos to stun lock enemies so you don't get hit when you're juggling enemies? Uh, I do like abilities that counter stuff. Like in Dragon's Dogma 2, you did get abilities that do special things if you get hit right. while they're happening. Those are really cool to implement. Uh, obviously, in Devil May Cry 5, you have so many different options of doing that. Um, and, uh, you know, Monster Hunter. I just I just am kind of burnt out on the, on the, oh, if the boss does this, do this, or you can do that. You just have to wait and yeah. that's fair enough and funny enough neo 2 did a pretty good job of promoting like your aggressiveness and you kind of be you know instead of reacting to an enemy being like no i'm going to overwhelm enemies right. yeah. and right like and grand that blue, overwhelm grand blue is oh, a good go example ahead. sorry yeah grand is? blue is another good example grand blue where it does things different oh. there is a there's a block and a dodge but like uh for example i played a character where you just stayed in the air like a dragoon and just kept hitting from the air so you don't get hit like different things you know different things that make it interesting yeah i w this is just i'm not saying this game should do it i would love and I, we talked about this in the Discord a couple months ago where we were talking about fighting systems. And I'm also a little burned out by the parry, especially when, let's say, the parry causes a weapon clang, but hitting the guy 15 times doesn't cause a weapon. There's something about it that starts to feel very, even more gamified, especially as we experience it more. I would love a game that just had block. Well, dodge is always there, you know, roll, whatever. But where the block was X, Y, Z and right left right up left or where you could hold it and if you block fighting games like a fighting game a bit um i don't this game is not the best example assassin's creed isn't but sifu did it really well i loved sifu's sifu combat. did it well yeah I, I i would like to see that because i also think parry is great but parry to me is built off the block mechanic normally anyway it's like the, for example your sword's usually in the same area for a parry as it is for a block it's just a different animation I would like to see blocks that clang a weapon truly off or or you're able to, you know, slide the weapon off your blade if you block correctly. The different stuff that we haven't really seen in games um, because block is boring. I think a lot of people think block is too passive and I think that they're right. But I think that you could do things to make block feel more impactful. And then that type of that's game what they did with Liza P, over here. Right? Yeah, that's I, what they did with Liza I, P. I didn't play it as much in, as, as a lot of people, so I don't know. Yeah. So if you block, you, you use a, you lose a sliver of health if you keep blocking, but when you attack, oh, okay. you gain it back. But if you parry, you just negate the whole the the damage. All the damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Bushido Blade. We talked about that last night, Abzi. Like we were talking about. Yeah. I can't remember what we were talking about. That got brought up though, where like you slice somebody, their arm starts to hang. I would like that in a in a full three D game, like you know, a, a yeah, high totally. a high high degree of of danger and blocking mm -hmm. is pretty safe where maybe your character is pretty good at blocking but then when you do the attack you know 
you got to make sure that it's like that's the time to do the attack and i agree yeah. with you that a lot of bosses it's it feels like boss fights in particular like yeah okay i just got to wait for you know i i just sort of know that there's a particular thing that's going to be his weakness versus like rock paper scissors, scissors almost like spider-man 2's boss yeah. fights you know where it's like yeah, oh now exactly. you gotta dodge oh now you have to parry do you know you how know, spider-man one beat that too by having three boss battles at once <laughs> when you had <laughs> but you it know, was very what dynamic bird or whatever what yeah, yeah yeah and it, yeah, it yeah. felt movie style right you know sifu yeah, yeah, felt yeah. movie style too though sifu that was... yes sifu was incredible just so sifu. what you can do with dude that. Yeah, and I got smoked fantastic. in Sifu when I first played that, man. Yeah, that yeah, was, yeah, yeah. by the way, the starting of Sifu, I certainly feel was harder than almost any Dark Souls games for me. I'm talking about me. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to understand what Sifu wanted it is from the definitely player. definitely harder than you Dark know. Souls games. Yeah, it was ridiculous, definitely man. Harder. Yeah, it's fast-paced, and there's directional And uh, different guys and... that you're just like, you got to, and tight court, remember? You go into a hallway, and it's like two big dudes, and you're all, oh my god, and a small guy. It looked cool like, as hell, dude. It, it looked, looked so cool yeah. doing your moves, and oh. Sifu was awesome. Did you, be, did you play Sifu, Johnny? No. No, I, I was a bit intimidated by just that initial learning curve you oh, guys talked okay. about yeah no yeah, sorry yeah, yeah we yeah. didn't sell that well uh, i i'm I sure it. you would do better now because you know you've heard our stories go ahead abzi sorry. the reason why i uh, i kind of you know got it was was because i was a huge absolver fan like i i loved absolver's combat system sadly they didn't put put out much content on it but <clears throat> i was in the camp that like oh absolver is going to be the next huge multiplayer game i'm going to get super good and climb the ranks and whatever but none of that happened so I was really, really excited for Sifu, and uh, it was awesome, yeah. Sifu also nailed it in that their story was told in a way that the roguelike made sense in the story, too. It, was, it wasn't just a fit. It was, you know, aging out and stuff where you got more powerful as you got older for a while. And then as you continued to die, it would, you know, that would go down, but you would that still do this. That was an incredible that was, mechanic. Yeah, that it was, was awesome and you because can only it get actually— some stuff Yes, exactly. Under, and it over. would it would change I saw people dying on purpose because they were like, I'm gonna aim for this. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna sort of practice, but I'm gonna aim for this age because your I've damage heard... increases but health decreases and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a really good idea. I'm sure have they announced a Sifu too? No, I Do don't think know? so. I think, the, I, don't think I think so. they announced a different game. Maybe. Maybe. Don't quote me on that. Time to go says currently Sifu is fifty percent off. And it had like a nested kind of, it had a mini roguelike aspect to it where you you ended a mission at the age that you ended on, but you can repeat that yes. to get a better age. Yes. To advance, yeah. yeah that That's was what really I'm cool. saying. The fallout paid off. The, fa the fallout. I saw fallout and I just said that. The <laughs> the uh, the fiction paid off. It, yeah, uh, yeah. it made sense in the gameplay loop and it all, it, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't even a big, de a, lot. a big deal. Yeah. yeah, it's got DLC too of some kind. I think it might just be modes. I think I know free upgrades. Yeah, it's like it's like stuff you can continue playing with. Mm. Oh, and maybe if you beat it, you mean is there N plus in that game? There was N plus. So there's in N originally. plus. Is there and there's some new other stuff. stuff. Some some stuff. I I didn't look into it. <clears throat> J.K., who is our resident Big Mac, says dodge for the win. Yeah, I like dodge. I like. Uh, do you guys like? I actually. Would rather have a game where you slide dodge and not roll, but I do understand yeah, I rolling just really. People love the roll, man. Like when I want this, you know, where it looks cool, where you're like, bah, like you know, a, a kung fu movie. Everybody else likes the fucking dude doing a somersault like a four year old yeah. child in a There's backyard. A, the big Elden Ring mod that if you're if you're light enough, you 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 slide like Bloodborne rather than yeah, than that rolls. feels that feels good. I think I like yeah. that. And dude, when you unrealistic obviously but when you get in one of those fighting games where you do dodge and if you're good and you're like wah 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 and it just yeah, feels yeah, yeah. It, you that know, instead Sifu, of rolling basically. it's like oh you, yeah you go like this you know what i mean it's really it just cool, feels yeah. it feels like every movie you've seen because you don't often see keanu reeves and matrix do a fucking somersault like it's pretty no. rare that he's going to be but the movement out of the, the slight Trinity out of the thing. way of the of the punch is and it's that economy of movement you feel like a master because you just barely move instead of doing the full thing you're like you know you say slipping and weaving and oh yeah that's awesome yeah um yeah oh somebody says they like they like shields in games uh because shields. of all this yeah shields are i i definitely feel that shields if they're used as a weapon as well like valhalla where you could wield one as a as a fucking bludgeon you know that was 
that was sweet, actually. That was one of the times where it did feel like a Viking, actually. Probably just because of the way the weapon clanged off people's domes. Nothing can beat Sekiro combat, Blue Arrow says. I would say people will argue that Bloodborne's does, but I got to tell you, I haven't played enough Bloodborne after I got sick playing it because of the stutter Nothing thing. beats Devil May Cry combat. Nothing ever beats Devil May Cry 5. Which Devil May Cry, though? Oh, okay. 5. 5. I just want to make sure because there nothing are some Devil May Cry. Close to Devil May Cry Five. Nothing even, nothing even breathes in the same uh, room as <laughs> Devil May Cry Five. I'm gonna argue <laughs> with you and say I personally like Devil May Cry, but I feel Neo Two beats it. Well, it's it's a different game, but like, but like, oh my god. Well, they're the all shit different, do, but I, I just feel like Neo so Two. Much. Yeah, Neo 2 true. Is amazing. But you can also Neo in Neo Two. They also had the alien weapons we just don't see in a lot of places, like the Kirsagama and stuff. So you're doing chain weapons, which is so rare in a lot of these games. And you're you're <laughs> yeah. getting to be able to do these different things, you know, that I I enjoy personally versus say Astral Chain. Have you played Astral Chain? I haven't. Or? I haven't. You've talked Johnny? about it a bunch. I just haven't yeah. Johnny, did you do Astral Chain? No, I did not. That was oh, the man. Switch game? Yeah, I got slept on because it was I guess yeah, the Switch it did. game, but Oh, that yeah. combat is amazing. You you get like access to like eight different mechs and deploy them anytime you want and string stuff I've together. I've not heard and... anybody complain about that game, weirdly enough. Yeah, I, mean, I just it's realized it's just awesome. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it's either not played it or loved it. Yeah, or loved I've, it. I, I'm just thinking because usually I'll track that in the Discord for a current conversation in a podcast. I don't think I've ever seen anybody be like, I, I disliked Astral Chain. It's either I did not play it or I beat it or. You know, I liked it, but, you know, I didn't beat it, which is sort of normal. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Sky Knight says, ACG always seems upset. I love really? it, man. I just had somebody say they're, <laughs> they're, never, they're never negative enough. As I told you yesterday, people bitch and go like, they God don't bitch enough. It. And this guy always seems I'm like, I can't win. I'll just yeah, tell you yeah. this. I, excitability on my part, as I've always been told since a little kid, looks like I'm pissed. It, I've always so, been told that. I've resting you, pissed face. Just you the way guys, it is. <laughs> resting, yeah, yeah. Yeah, instead of bitch face, I'm just like, like when you guys you talk guys... and I'm listening, you'll see me go, and it looks like I hate you. I don't, by the way. Go ahead, Johnny. <laughs> if you guys see right now, like, Ghost of Tsushima 2, bam, it's coming out. Would you be excited for that? Absolutely. Would you like the combat enough to? And if they said no more rock, paper, another. scissors, I'd be... All and the that. DLC changed that enough that I feel there's no chance they will do the rock, paper, scissors. The DLC ch adjusted it. And thank you, Penty, if you're watching, because he reminded me of that, that there was That's enough cool. adjustment. I feel the developers were for sure knowing what we were bitching A about. A bit more open. I'll yeah. play it, I'll play it when it comes to uh, PC again, because I never did the DLC. So excited to get back mm, into it. You didn't it. do the DLC. Did you do the multiplayer then? Or is that that's also A the little DLC, bit. Right? A tiny yeah. bit. Johnny, I did the multiplayer a tiny bit. Johnny, me and Reg, right? We did. Man, the I'm DLC. a double dude, dipper, dude. Good I'm, times. I'm double it was dipping a on them all. I'm yeah, a so I double dip on them. Yeah, yeah, I whatever. always double dip. God damn. Yeah, as uh, SBZ says, when ACG was born, he already looked pissed. I, I, probably. I mean, probably. I just have that kind of face. It's an unfortunate rage face. Astro Chain has some uh, old boy trying to prove me wrong says astral chain had some fun had some fun <laughs> oh he, he's br he's bringing it down he's, he's like bringing it down he's bringing it. he's like listen guys listen 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 mediocre chill out no he didn't yeah. say that but <laughs> that's <was> fun <laughs> um i couldn't get uh time to go says i couldn't get into dmc5 i uninstalled maybe i should give it another chance devil may cry takes a while to get um and you can the thing with Devil May Cry is you can play it without doing the fun things. You can just spam yes. stuff. Yes, you especially can. Especially on easy or whatever. Yeah. So the fun comes from you you blabbing, basically going into that training session and finding out different yeah. combos. And you know, I found that being bad at that game was actually fun. Less fun oh, than less other fun. games. Okay. Yeah. 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 Being I, thought, bad I that only started. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? So like, I only yeah, yeah, started 100%. enjoying it a lot. Yeah. L later when I understood. Oh, oh okay. yeah, that's what absolutely. I was saying. Yes, no, that is, I get what you're saying. That is absolutely right. Because with that initially game. I thought, well, it's just spamming. I'm just spamming yeah, yeah, yeah. this. But no, actually, there is real thought to how you, you know, play the it's, combos. It's, it's it's another one of those games where where they give you tools and and you. you it's deceivingly deep. It's it's not with, the, the thing. Yeah. It's not too like narrow. It's not like. 
this is the comp square square triangle that's all you can do no they give you s different things and then it's like it's up to you to yeah it's, more it's like a fighting game yeah yeah that's what i yeah I love that. Also, it. before I forget, I want to shout out Turum uh, in our Discord, who's uh, always helping with links. He's helped us do some um, uh, where he takes notes for the podcast and stuff so that I've been able to cut some videos at times and stuff like that. And I forgot to shout him out last week. He's been awesome, at help, super helpful with jumping in and helping out with anything in the channel. Uh, very valued Discord member that is so quiet that it is easy for everybody to forget him because he's he's one of those guys that will be in chat for like three hours and I'll be like, oh, Turim's in here. What are you doing? He's like, just listening. I'm playing some games. So, but he's, he was doing the thing where he listens to the podcast and gives you notes on something stupid I said. So I was able to go and cut it into a short or what have you, um, which unfortunately iTunes replaced. They have their own now. But I realized when I was talking to him because he was doing a really good job. He was like, okay, Carrick talked about Dragon's Dogma 2 again. You know, I'm sure he wanted to kill himself <laughs> by the 40th time. But he was saying, like, funny joke about this, which is what I needed, because just seeing words doesn't help you. You know, it's, yeah. it's like we're just talking. But, uh, yeah, yeah, super helpful, and I want to say how much I appreciate him. Let's talk about a game I appreciate that's having issues, but please bear with it. You guys know me. I would never say this otherwise. Gigantic. Yes. Yes. So. I talked ah. to Jay Reaper. I talked to a bunch of people on Discord who've got to play, but it's had some server issues. But when they did get to play, we're like, oh, server my issues. Never heard God. of God. This is awesome. Yeah, but it is a re release. It's like, and it's, it's, it's a, it's their last ditch attempt at this game. So 1999, it, it's, it's not super expensive. Um, I just, I really want people to give that game a try. And Jabroni asked us about that. He says, with the re-release of Gigantic having server issues right off the bat and the almost unending list of games with similar issues, what are some of the realities devs face on the back end when it comes to server design and upkeep and the internet itself as being a piece of shit? <laughs> like, but Johnny, like you do this kind of stuff, software kind of stuff all the time. What's... Like, what's something that maybe we just don't talk about too much that's, like, on the back end of a game that, you know, you, we just assume it should be working fine, but it's actually something difficult? Or do you have an example? I don't know for games because it's very different than my world, but I, th I the obvious things with server capacity not scaling with server number is one mm -hmm. that's a little bit difficult to test because there can be different conditions for that that you can't replicate without mm -hmm. like real load, real stress tests. Mm -hmm. So that can be very difficult. I know that net code in general is very challenging and you can have really deep problems in your net code with how things behave once you have a lot of people playing together mm -hmm. in how you, know, you can have banding and all these types of issues right. that people see. And these can be super hard to correct because they're very uh, coupled with how you've created everything. Right. So also, I think those those would be yeah. Also, there's no like one portion or segment of code. Um, like netcode encompasses so much stuff ingrained in the game itself. Like it's not like hey, the netcode's like over here in its own little spot. You know what I mean? Everything's just like mashed together. So I I bet that. Um, you know, has a lot of issues because it's not just server load. It's probably like unique things happening with the game itself that uh, that present issues to the net. I think we're pretty good on this podcast uh, of talking of the real stuff already. So we've hit on this many like we do have a tendency to not just be like fix your shit or blah, blah, blah. Even though I do that sometimes, I think for the most part, we have talked about back end stuff and signage and DRM checking stuff, making sure things aren't you know, being hacked or what have you. There's all of that kind of stuff. But I also believe we are now at the point as well that, you know, as somebody who uses Discord all the time and always runs into issues with audio and the voice going bad or video clipping, you know, all these kind of weird things. There's technicalities that also, I do think they're not testing enough in some games. I for sure do. I do believe that 100%. And I believe that testing That's needs to become more robust. Exactly. It needs to become more robust, which means you need to sell people on a thing, by the way, that has no return. And trying to sell, and by the way, when I say sell, I mean to anybody, even an indie dev, has to sell it to themselves. Okay, I should test all this. There's going to be no return whatsoever visually. You're not going to, other than not negative Steam reviews. But 
There's no, if you're trying to sell to a person or an investor or a silent investor or anybody saying we need to spend $5 million to test this thing that you're not going to understand whatsoever. It's not going to be in the game. You're not going to understand it, but it has to do with signing into the server. And then what if somebody gets popped out and signs back in, not duplicating that and saying they can't go in because they're already playing little shit. Like how fast do you sign somebody out? How do you, there's a lot, man. There's, there's a lot. You know, I, I think companies that do the testing, I want to see them become even more robust and sell themselves well. Like get a couple good games under your belt and then sell that openly, not just behind the scenes companies, but be like this. We do this. Maybe do some interviews on podcasts or something. But, you know, we do this, blah, blah, blah. These are the games that have hit and you've noticed didn't have a lot of issues. That's because we they spent big amounts of money and. They made sure that we did, you know, all this kind of testing to make sure that a game launches. And then also there's what if the game blows up and you didn't expect it to? I well, mean, this one they... looks fun. I'm watching some gameplay of it right now. It Gigantic doesn't look... is a blast. Bro. Yeah. Gigantic is a blast. Yeah, it is very fun. But I think developers have a ton of problems. Developers, publishers, it's, it's rough. And AI testing... We can argue all we want, but there's AI load testing and stuff. I, I want to see more of that happen where that you can, you know, test the hell out of your game. Uh, Brash Auk slash Avon Nuss says, with the Software Outlaws release date announced, how does that impact the theorized release window of AC Red, if at all? I feel like AC Red's getting delayed. Uh, the only reason I say that is we're in what? Mar uh, April? We're in the middle of April. Um we now know September, or is it August for Star Wars? So August. Is this their first game post Elden Ring? Like, no, we're talking uh, about like first Star game Wars. they started. We're talking oh, about, talking about Red. Oh, I was talking about Assassin's Creed Red. That's all. Well, then, what do you mean by Elden Ring? Do you post mean? Elden oh, do you mean like is post... this Ubisoft's first game post Elden Ring? Yeah, yeah. Like after Not seeing Elden Ring success Ubi, and what they've but, done, oh, like gotcha. how they've done their map and stuff. Going. I get where you're you know going. what yeah. I mean. What if uh, um, what if they're trying to go a different direction than the checklisty shit? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That too. Right. I yeah. I feel like delaying it is isn't off the table just because of Star Wars, but they don't have a huge overlap too much because Division doesn't have a huge overlap, right? With Assassin's Creed, I don't feel it does. Assassin's Creed feels really different than um, than Division. And it hasn't really stopped them from doing the, you know, the Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed. I, I don't know. Yeah, they I don't know if do shoot ahead. themselves in the foot. Remember Watch Dogs Legion plus Assassin's Creed. Oh, plus, they did. Uh, they did. Plus the, no, one, you're the right. worst, the worst one was was for Phoenix Rising. Didn't get a time to Any shine PR. at all. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. No, you, yeah. you proved me wrong on that because that the biggest issue was Watch Dogs Legion with Valhalla. I mean, not the biggest yeah. issue, but it, it definitely did not let, you know. Biggest issue with some tech issues too, but yeah, that's that's a good Legion point. suffered, and uh, and the other one suffered because you know it's Assassin's Creed, it's the biggest one, right? So, yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point. I was just saying because I don't know anything about Red's release, but it just feels like mm. I, I feel like Ubisoft would have we would start there would be more, and I'm on those lists usually with you know, unless because they've looked Get at my the past reviews. Out. Like, Maybe they hey. looked at my past reviews and they're finally like, man, we don't want him to check out Assassin's Creed. I don't know. I liked I liked Mirage though. So let's see. Uh Knucklehead says our game install size is getting to the point of diminishing returns. Newer games keep getting bigger and bigger, but do you think the ad advances being made warrant that jump? I don't play every game and rarely play games when they release, so I'm out of the zeitgeist a bit. But it seemed like games during the 360 and PS3, Xbox One, and PS4 era did a lot with a lot less. Textures and audio are massive. Audio, yeah. And people are asking yeah. for every language known to man now. And uh, 10 languages is not unknown to see. As in 10 full soundtracks, 10 full audio, every person having a different language. That is massive in its size. So I, I don't know if diminishing returns. I mean, it is if you just pick English all the time. <laughs> right? Right. Plus, like uh, if you... <laughs> since the Go 360, ahead. like, have you seen games right now? Like, how much bigger they are and how yeah, yeah. graphically crazy they are? Except I GTA saw Fallout 3's that. textures, Abzi. I don't need to return to those textures. Shit, oh, you, remember, you remember the color filters and shit? Dude? Oh, yeah. Urine filter on that one. Remember the faces, mm -hmm. man? Like, the double chins? You can't escape it. 
Or the bloom in uh, Oblivion. Or any woman in any Bethesda game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. They need to they need to do more so people can be more different. Look at what happened with Starfield. Third gen characters running around. And they patched yeah. it now. But remember when that first came out, you were like, oh, these are definitely a huge step down from the... the big uh, fucking... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The eyes. Um, I would say... I would say th one more thing I want to add. Yes, sir. Developers care if a game runs well. They care. I'm not saying they fix all this. <laughs> they care if a game runs well. They care if a game sounds well. They care if a game performs well. They do not care about your hard drive size. I can guarantee you that because I've heard the discussion. That's the also as a gamer, that's the least of my. Just, yeah, they do you know, not care. They they would rather so big file sizes that can be uh, compressed. I wish and they would care more. Uh, care, care less more. actually. I wish they would care less because some some of them uh, fucking some of them ruin the audio with the compression because they want to yeah. make it smaller. You yeah. know what I mean? So or they have to. Give me give me the three hundred so gigabyte audio. games, dude. <laughs> Yeah, um, developers, especially compression is a big deal. You have Kraken and you have Xbox has their own chip and they compress differently with small files versus large. And yeah. so these games are packed into huge files that are then decompressed on the fly. Those, mm -hmm. they're huge. They're just, I mean, they are just massive and yet they're performant because of that. That's the other thing is people think, including myself, I've done this where you have to study the tech of it to figure out why something's been changed. But as the games get bigger, there are definitely times, I don't know if you guys saw this, Forza, I believe, was the one that just last week patched itself and removed 28 gigs. And people are like, oh, that wasn't needed. No, it was actually that they figured out more efficient ways of putting big files together. That's all it was. It was just over time, you figure out new ways of doing things. You're more performant. Your low-end PC becomes higher end than it was three years ago when the game released. And suddenly you can you know, shave a little bit of spot off. But I, I, I'll tell you, I bet you, I can't think of any developer I've ever talked to who's been like, yeah, size is a primary concern. It's not. They're worried about all the other stuff versus this nebulous thing of size on a disc, yeah. which is, it's the same thing with the internet speed. That's a lot of that comes on my side as a gamer. I have to sort of go, okay, I want to play an online game. I can't run it at 10 megs a second. I have to, also, like, I have to better internet. I do some hygiene on your installed games, you fucks. Like, some people are running around, they still have Sekiro installed because they wanted to finish the playthrough five yeah, true. years ago. True. I just talked to somebody last night who's asking me about a secondary drive for one of their systems. We talked about it for a while. I was like, you could do this, you could do this. And then I said, why do you want to do it? And they said, oh, I just want all the games installed still. And I was like, okay, how fast is your internet? Oh, it's one gig down, one gig up no caps wow. and i was like okay it may not make sense to even spend 250 for this you know nvme it may just make sense for you to hit the delete button you know it, i mean just uh, they might be worried about a situation like the crew where the game once it's gone it's gone but it's like most of the time those games once they're gone it's an online component or something which sucks by yeah by the way single player uh let's see abzi brought up something that we didn't talk about last time Galactic, or did we? The Galactic Expansion for Starfield? Did we talk about that mod? Did we touch on that? We touched, did not touch on that. I don't think so. Dude. But it looks incredible, man. Um, you could just turn your whole game into a city builder simulator. That's what I wanted from the Outpost. When I heard about Outpost and Starfield, that's what I hoped it would be like. But uh, now it's fully realized with a mod. So, or hell somewhat, yeah. Because it, it is early the... access mod, but yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, and I'm sure they'll be able to do a lot more with the creation kit, but yeah, true. for now, it's just, like, a really, really cool to see. Basically, what it does is expand the the, the colony mechanics and adds a bunch of stuff uh, that you can do. And they're adding, I think, the ability to, for uh, real people to come and trade with you, like, come and stop at your base and all that so stuff. So, almost like, like the system. normal ship trading, Capitalism. but it'll be, like, within your, yeah, within your base. It's got yeah. mechs too, which was awesome. It's you know, got buildable mechs, mechs too. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. Is it TGS Galactic Colonies? Expansion? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah, Land on any world and build your own empire. And you can terraform. You can also terraform planets now. Which, we'll be able which to. Is we'll be really able cool. to. I don't think oh, that one's turned. Yeah. Yeah. See, gotcha, so I, gotcha. I do want to point out that what we're talking about, some of this is in, some of it's his ideas of what's going in. It's a little unclear sure. on exactly what's there because he wrote. 85 Dude, pages you can worth of build detail. The but, mechs, so yeah, you can not... build the mechs now. Holy That's in there now. 
Um, next yep, thing yep, up, yep. Drewman says Fallout TV show. He just says de debuts because this was last uh, week. But Abzi's watched two. Uh, Johnny, how many have you watched? How many episodes? Uh, we two. won't spoil anything, two guys. Episodes. Okay, so you both watched two. Good, no, yes, no, thumbs down, thumbs up, bye, never touch. Oh, okay. Bye. Surprisingly I, uh, positive, I would say. Uh, Fallout holds a very special place in my heart. You know, I always talked about how Fallout 3 impacted me as a kid and changed who I am as a person. Not to that, <laughs> you know, it's not, I'm not going to go that hard, but like it, it yeah. really does uh, that, that whole setting, the whole atmosphere. It, uh, it was really, really important to me. I, I loved it. And I was very, very worried about TV shows because, come on, video game adaptations, you know, they're not always mm -hmm. the best. And Jonathan Nolan is a hit or miss. Um, but thankfully, from uh, those two first episodes, were was absolutely exactly what I hoped it would be. Um, I think they nailed the aesthetic very well. I think they nailed uh, the the comedy, the dark humor. Um, I think the actor for Maximus was incredible. He had a very very good scene, which was which was stunning. Um, I think uh, the music is on fucking point. I really really love the music, and uh, and just the vibe of it all. The characters are really really cool. They had cool intros for them, and um, I like where they're headed. I like I like this direction. Yeah, and I can't say more. I want to get m more yeah. into details, but there's a lot of neat, neat, neat details in the games that, for, as a Fallout fan, I appreciate so much. Like just even just seeing a stim pack in there or something like that is just yeah, really cool. the stim packs. I think overall, like the vibe of the wasteland mm -hmm. is nailed, and uh, there's some great humor too in there. Yeah, 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 um, and Walton Goggins, right, is in there. He yep. like he, he's fantastic he's in fantastic. this. Yeah. And um the the vault dweller character as well, Lucy. Yeah, and, and the, also... yeah. Really good. And, and some of the cinema, cinematography, like there's a scene that has to do with one of the characters and it was like an outro thing and it just it was like, you know, when a scene hits and you're like you feel it everywhere, you, you get like goosebumps yeah. and shit. And, Absolutely. So hitting very well oh, the and, uh, and the camera when they work. showed the the mech suit for the first time, that, I, oh, I just saw myself. I was I was resting at <laughs> angry face right there. I was listening to you talk about the outro, and I'm like, <laughs> <You're> like fucking. <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, an outro for a scene. Not I know, for, uh, I know. I was listening episode. to you intently, and I looked at my camera, and I noticed I was like looking, I think resting, when you get angry focused, face. Oh, okay. I was very focused like... on what he said, so I was like, I went from this. I went from to. And I was just like, oh, yeah, there you go. So yeah, yeah, with yeah. Fallout also, I think that there's a lot of these. You talked about them. There's animes that do well. Some do poorly. But there's there are some good animes. But the reason why I'm so excited for this is not Fallout. It's because it's a show, finally, that's doing well versus Halo, which has had to dig itself out from the disaster that it had. And that means my games that I am interested in something different can possibly, you know, somebody may look and go, look, they did Fallout well. And by the way, well isn't just gamers, man. That thing's got like 93 on Rotten Tomatoes, or it did. Like, it's honestly, it seems to be yeah. overall very, very good. That means maybe we might get some other lesser known or even if it is well known IP that's really exciting. I do like Fallout. I'm just saying... I'm just even more excited that it's not just us saying it's good, you know. And the thing yeah, though, the whole it, it, thing is like, let's let's be real. Bethesda isn't aren't good storytellers. Okay, they're not that good. You don't play Bethesda games for the story, but the worlds have, are interesting. Sometimes the lore is trash as well, um, but but the worlds are are usually really cool. And the with adaptations to to games like those, it's like you can do whatever you want as long as you know you're not upsetting people, the retconning or whatever the hell. You can just tell a whole new story and it doesn't have to be the same characters that we've seen before, um, which I think uh, can hurt like Dude. Master Chief and Halo when they're adapting Master Chief. It's like The it's Last of Us <laughs> changed hugely on how the stuff spread and all that. They completely did away with some stuff because they were like, it's too hard to tell a story with everybody with gas masks on. And so they fine. retconned a ton of It is fine. And I'm sure I haven't seen anything, but I'm, with Halo, there was issues with retconning real and not real or or Witcher. noticeable and not noticeable Witcher. And so Fallout to be a... But the one thing I've heard from multiple people is that this is the best... And by the way, they I'm not saying this um, because I also don't agree with the comparison. But I've heard multiple people say the story and this is better than any of the Fallouts ever. So that to me is pretty exciting. I don't that know they've about enjoyed the two. stories and stuff. I, one yeah, and two I weren't great. I, I liked them, but they weren't 
great shakes. There's there's a lot of nostalgia on those. But yeah. By the way, there is a a character f uh, played from uh, played by Ben from Lost. From Lost. If yeah. You remember, he shows. And he's up. also the guy who runs the mainframe and person of interest. That guy's a good actor, man. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you say? Paulo also has such a such a unique setting and atmosphere. Like you don't yeah. see many post apocalyptic, dark, humorous. Nineteen um, fifties, fifties, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you know, instead of a semiconductor, yeah. they—I forgot what it was, but um, you don't see that a lot. So that it's a really, really cool setting to see. We've seen fantasy, we've seen sci-fi a lot, you know. So this is something very interesting. We've seen zombies. It's awesome. Maybe yeah, but they got that unique know. mix of like high tech with super shit tech. Like yeah, <laughs> mix of high yeah. tech, low tech. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. The best Fall thing about Fallout Two is because it was a game first. The the weird tech not making sense doesn't matter. You know, like you look at 1950s oh, yeah. and then LCDs, but with, on your arm that's super small, which, you know, it, like the microization doesn't work. It doesn't make sense on something. It doesn't matter because that fiction is just built in. So the idea that a bunch of people are able to watch it, probably because of mm. the games also and ignore some of that, just be like, whatever makes sense, makes sense because it's Fallout, which is an alternate thing anyway. Alternate tech advances, alternate everything, and it's worked out well. Everything I've seen has been really positive man i mean really positive it's just been like yeah. dude this is and, you know and some stuff suits really well to a more cinematic thing like uh the the mutated creatures mm -hmm. there's there's a like when you see a mutated roach in fallout 4 mm -hmm. it's gamified you know it's very easy to yeah dissociate from it right uh, but there's a, a, a way in which, like, they show it that's really well done, where you get it like, holy moly, it's, you know, like the, yeah, I won't say anything, but like, they do the creatures pretty well so far, yeah. based on what I've yeah. seen. Um, Another show I want to prop up, because I'm stunned I waited this long, and it's probably the last show in the last couple years other than maybe Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but I think I might actually laugh more at this one is Resident Alien with the guy from Firefly, Wash. Um, oh. Where he's an alien in a, a small town and he's replaced somebody and he's the town doctor, so he's like looking up on Google how to do operations and shit during them. All kinds of crazy shit. And it is, I have, I mean, gut-achingly stupid funny stuff it's a little bit like meet the parents it can be uncomfortable because he plays an alien who doesn't understand humans but it is i mean goddamn man i mean goddamn like it, it is i i had heard he was good at acting and i always thought in firefly he was the best part like he was there was great humor in firefly but something about him in that show and the stupid stuff he said and his comedic timing and my god man it is absolutely funny and it is insanely good special effects that's the other thing i'm noticing in these shows man in the last five years that special effect has risen to the point now to where you're like oh damn we're getting where you don't see the blue screen as much you know green screen screen yeah. was the first then you get blue screen which looked a lot better but there was that disconnection between real and fake and they do some stuff in that show which is just primo man <laughs> It's a fucking amazing Especially show. Especially in, amazing in show. comedies, like in sci-fi comedies, it used to be super B-level. Right, because they wouldn't pay for the the special effects, either, right? You know, so it was like a suit and I don't something. know if it's the Orville who started this thing where they have, like, you know, A-team graphics people. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what they have in this one because a lot of it doesn't require special effects, but there is a sheriff in this. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> he's one of the best comedic timing actors I've ever seen in my life. And he came in and he says the most unacceptable things that it is. I mean, I was listening to him just, you know how you, there's certain comedians that say unacceptable things, but that's their shtick because they're a comedian and they're separated by the stage and the audience. They're not delivering it during a show. This guy says stuff that is just consistently that cringe, oh my God, did he really say what I think he said? Like, did he say that to this mother or what? It's it's phenomenal, guys. You need to see it. Looks like people in uh, chat have actually watched it too. Yeah, that, that show is awesome. So Fallout's done well. Shogun's done well. Uh, I don't know of any other anime. I'm a, I hear Dragon's Dogma 2 is coming. There's an anime for Dragon's Dogma 2 from what I heard. I think I read it somewhere. Um, Castlevania has had how many? Two? 
Castlevania cartoon two, seasons? Two, three. Two, two or three. three. Seasons? No, seasons uh, four for one, oh. and the other show has, I think, one or two. Oh, damn. Oh, so so not only multiple seasons, but two shows, you're saying? Two TV two, shows. Two, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay, well, there you go, man. There you go. That's awesome. It's, it's cool to see games do well. I don't know what I want to see next. Somebody was asking for Elder Scrolls, and I was like, uh-uh. It doesn't have the... Like, I think what works with Fallout is the humor and the, the different world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's surprising it's different. Elder Scrolls is like... A, do, that do, would just do be a Lord better... of the Rings. Yeah, do a high Lord of the Rings first, and then we'll talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just try that. That know. is true. They have yeah. the Lord of the Rings it's, shows. Have, it's uh, Skyrim so is hard to, to nail because it's very like highbrow, high fantasy. Yeah. yeah, 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 man. It's exciting to see that. I, it, it's amazing how many people have liked it too. There's something about mm. that where I don't mind if people like what I like, but when they do, you know, when everybody's That's talking awesome. or excited, there's this awesome feeling of and communal, it's cool to like, see like people who normally like you would say normies who don't play games you know right. like they're also really digging it like you said um let's see drewman asked about the triple i showcase we have talked about that kasops also asks about fallout he says uh oh let's talk about the fallout next gen so fallout next gen got announced uh the update it'll have updates for the old gen too oh um, man we it's, it's technically current gen and past gen but in poor articles modders. that's how it's written um poor modders oh. yeah so we're getting PC supports, got widescreen, a couple other things. Uh, the the Xbox uh, Series S and X and the PlayStation 5 are getting, you know, increased resolution, that kind of stuff. This has been something that they talked about a long time ago, but they put on the back burner while they're doing Starfield. So to finally get that's exciting. If you like that game, you know, obviously, if you don't like the game, you're not going to be excited about this. But I'm excited to sort of see what it does, get some people into it. I don't know if I'll jump back into it. Um, I do like the game, actually, a great deal, but I played a shit ton in VR and a shit ton of the real game. So like going back and yeah. I got to admit the textures might have been rough or what have you and they're getting increased or the re or the FPS but I don't know if that's enough to pull me back after so many hours to play it but it is it is cool and it's free. Right? Like it's always nice to have a free update instead of Bethesda selling you a Skyrim special edition version that not only breaks mods but doesn't even work as well. So or has <laughs> terrible audio like the Switch version. Talking about bad audio in a game. Oh. Um, uh, this is uh, Lucitan says that people are calling Fallout the very awesome TV show, or VATS, as the acronym. Yeah. That is what's being said, by the way. I, I did read that this morning as well. People are using VATS. Uh, Slate Aspire 2, we talked a little bit about that. A DLC size Starfield mod turns, we talked about that. Triple X. Or triple I, Slay the Spire. Uh, Knuckleheads asks an odd question. Pointed. Not in an angry way, but a little... I, I don't know if he's trying to catch us. He says, do you guys have a history with prank calls? Ever prank call someone or get prank called? I remember my uncle yeah, prank once called or twice. fast food places using sound clips from Sling Blade. <laughs> Sling Blade. That's a good one. That's actually funny. You have called. You have done a felony. Yeah, yeah two friends. Jeff. No, yeah, no, no. Friends. Not to random people. To friends only. And I do, I've done a lot of ding dong ditch as a kid, and hotels and crashing weddings and all. Oh that. sure, yeah, all that yeah. normal stuff, normal kid stuff. Well, I don't Try know if kids do that anymore. They're just uh, scrolling TikTok. So yeah, yeah, or smashing their balls, or fucking hiding their eyes like bird, whatever it was, <laughs> and running into shit. I uh, I would <laughs> say I don't remember doing any prank calls. I don't know if I would have known anybody's numbers because when I was a kid. You know, there wasn't cell phones. It was like, you, you know, you had your phone. Was stuff. Home I mean, phones. I guess you could look. Yeah, I guess you could look up a number, a but yeah, it book. wasn't my thing. Yeah, yeah it wasn't yeah, my thing to look book. up a random person and, you know, and and we did get some. I do remember getting a, you know, call where somebody would say something. You'd be like, what? You know, but wasn't. I, I think my humor is a little more highbrow than prank calls. I think. Oh my god! I, don't I remember know. back in the day calling a central thing to ask for the number of like a Domino's or whatever. So I can oh, call you mean Domino's calling up like the food. operator and being like, yeah, can yeah, I get yeah, the pizza? Yeah, <laughs> yeah can I get I've, the number for, yeah. I've definitely done yeah. that. You're too lazy to go to the fucking yellow pages and you're like, I don't know. Just connect me. Connect <laughs> me, bro. I don't know what's your emergency. And like, I need a deep dish, man. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's the phone number? I, I think I did call 911 when I was a kid a couple times to ask them for information that wasn't required. They were nice. We're a smaller town. It probably wasn't super busy, but I do remember occasionally not being able to find a phone number or what have you, but yeah. Um, 
Johnny brought this up today. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the third best-selling PlayStation 5 game ever in Japan. Oh, oh in Japan. Go. But still. Well, in, so what beat only, it? only in Japan, but ever. So I wow. think Final Fantasy 16 is above it for now. No shit. And That's then surprising PS5? to me. PS5? Yeah. PS5. Yeah. In, oh, but they in Japan. Have, like, two games on. Oh. Yeah. Well, they have... No, they games. have... <laughs> but third, what would win over... Okay, Final Fantasy, and what's the other one? What's first? What's first? Uh, Let me guess. Okay. Oh, so it has to be Japan and Final Fantasy, or it has to be Japan and PS5. So there's two filters on that question. So PS5 yep. games in Japan, uh, Genshin Impact, is that on PS5? No, that doesn't sell, though. It's free, right? Genshin Impact's free, isn't it? Anyway, wouldn't right. matter. I don't know. I don't know. So, okay, I pulled it up here. Um, Brand blue? Oh, is it not just exclusive? I thought you were talking about exclusive. Burr, 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 burr. Sorry, they're like going around, ring around the rosy with the data. Uh, 16 beats it and Gran Turismo 7. So 16 is the top Whoa. seller. I did not expect that. With 429,000 copies. Mm -hmm. And then Grand there's Turismo GT7. 7. Damn. And then Rebirth. I would never, we could have sat for a long time and I would not have ever thought that would be. Yeah. Because it wasn't greeted very positively. And this is from Famitsu issues. as the uh -huh. source. So I'm not I sure. I mean, they're, they're reporting numbers from other people. That's safe. If they're reporting their own yeah. numbers, it's not safe. But yeah. okay, gotcha. Those numbers are usually only physical sales and shit, too. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, all these companies have so many different sales avenues now that it's hard to, you know, you never hear the true numbers. You, you, It's doing well, though. I guess you should say that is even if we don't know the other numbers, it's done well enough to be the third. And it's the latest. So it's also done even better when you think that yeah, GT, it has a GT smaller yeah, is such an window. old game compared. Yeah, yeah. So that's not bad. That's good sales. Um. Sailor Sarah wanted us to talk about Dune MMO. I don't know much about it. I just know that I've now heard from about six PR people, uh, uh, sorry, press, journalists, uh, YouTubers who've seen Dune, the game, and have been super high on it. Like, and they're not, you know, really that kind of game fan or even Dune fans. So that's actually, it seems to me like that game is actually probably looks like it's going to be pretty good. I haven't got to play it. I'm I, I'm not a Dune fan, really. I don't know about Me you neither. guys. Dune doesn't. I'm I'm, no. I'm sick of the Dune talk. I don't like the movies that much. People, I like the people movies, go like, what the but fuck I, is wrong with you? The, the the oh really? Yeah, the the world itself. I I've read, watched the shows, all that kind of stuff. But as a game, it seems odd. You know, it's a little. I got to I got to see it. Well, I didn't watch the second one, but I didn't like the first. Well, not the old one, but the first one that came out a couple of years ago. The first Dune movie. The um. Yeah, so I just Tim never bothered Timothy. watching the second one. Yeah, yeah, with Timothy Chalamet. I, I called him Timberlake, and I don't think the chat was. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. him though as an actor. I, I I definitely think he did a good job in Dune, but it doesn't yeah. it doesn't hugely grab me. Um, let's see what else do we got here. Looking at my news, but while I'm doing this, anybody have anything else that they want to talk about? It's like come up any cool news while I'm searching for my notes. Any other cool news? Ama cool news. Ama amazing game. New news. Amazing. Amazing game. Just type uh, that I wanted to, to bring game. something up. Oh, oh wait, Manor that... Lords is early access, by the way, guys. Manor Lords oh. is confirmed early access. Um, but you can't pre-order it on Steam, so there's no worry of someone pre-ordering it thinking it's not early access, but yes. Oh, so he removed so there's no early access on Steam sale at all. There's just his his website, I guess. There's no pre-ordering on Steam, yeah. There's there's no way to buy it right now until it comes out. And apparently that's the biggest indicator. Someone said that's the biggest indicator if a game is coming out to early access or not is the ability to pre-order it or not. But sometimes full releases don't even have pre-orders, so it's like, you know, yeah. you can't okay. like depend on that too much. Yeah. All right, Johnny, what were you going to say? Um, Xbox has a game preservation team now, which mm, I thought yeah. was interesting. So those guys are dedicated to you know, supporting uh, back catalog on future hardware and all that, which is cool. But I wanted to bring up, like, how much can a team like that do from Xbox's perspective 
it's not like they can get in there and fix a game, right? That doesn't, it has to be the devs of the game. If they want to add something or like, you know, widescreen support, all these types of things. It's representation in further game making. So that would mean in a team when you're making a game, they would they would have like they're on emails or what have you. They're like an HR rep in some meetings you may have where they're able to come and say, make sure we're working on game preservation in the future. What you know, what have you make sure we're putting that into games. But past games, you're absolutely right. You have to you would have to push finances and change things for those. I, I think with game preservation, uh, the big uh, another big reason why it's being discussed right now is the crew. Even though the crew was so old, it got turned off, and that also means people. You know, if you buy it, you can't play it. And we were talking about that last night in the Discord. Like, the, I want. I've talked about this before. I get why the older ones aren't, but I would at some point. I just I bitched about this before. I just devs need to have it in their plan day one. Whether it be a little server package, they're ready to pipe out when when they go dead, and they're like, okay, here's your here's your server infrastructure for um, GitHub. We've got it planned, yep. and and that's taken care of because and and the single player games requiring uh, a login is different than one requiring a download because of a Blu-ray size. Uh, I'm talking more about like where they ping back to the server. By the way, Hitman did this. Remember, Hitman had the server for a long time. It was like was still mm. online and I, I think they patched it out but yeah i think with forward preservation really all, all these companies want to make sure too that they can continue to sell the game they probably yeah. want it to work too so that they can be like this person might handle the server but we would love to sell you the game for five bucks you know 20 years in the future for sure um, i saw some people saying oh does this mean they're adding like 60 fps modes to old games that's where i thought that there ain't no way, right? Unless the devs are actually working with them. No, FPS Boost was their big chance, and they did a great job with it. They're one of the few companies that have figured out how to hook into old games and fake that they're just running on a faster you know, thing. They've done all kinds of stuff on that side. But no, it won't be going back. Some of these game developers don't exist anymore. They don't. They literally, yeah, like, the, you know, maybe Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo own an IP somewhere, but that company's gone. Like, there's nobody even there to work on the game without paying development teams to go in and tear it all apart and figure out what they need to do. So, no. But in the future, and this is the way yeah. it's unfortunately has to be done. It should have been done years ago. But, you know, I want I want it to... I, I want to be able to buy a game. So when I buy a book, it doesn't... The only real problem with buying a book that's super old is English may have changed. You know, the wording may have changed. The writing style may have changed. But you can still read mm. that. Movies, you can still buy something. Vinyl, you can still get. Um, you might have to do specialist ways of getting that, but you're still able to. That's what people want with games. And the internet, we're so connected with the internet that, like, there's that big disconnect. Because I have friends who, they don't have PCs at all. They're just using GeForce. And I just told them a couple days ago, I'm like, I had no power for 11 days. Couldn't play anything. Like, at all. There was, oh, well, I mean, I could play the occasional you know, console game or whatever, if I had a generator running, but if the internet was down, the internet's down. If the server's gone, the server's gone. I like that they're I like that they're doing it. They're the first big companies to do it. And I want to see more people do it. Definitely. Uh Man Eater just reached 14 million units sold. God damn. That's the shark damn. game. That is not what I expected to ever read. I that is a lot. I wonder if they had really it did drop in price. <sighs> I mean, I don't know if they had special and sales. They, but... Well, they also gave it for free on Epic for a while, so I imagine that counts to as sales technically. Because no. you like buy free, it through free, the you're store. not allowed to report that it's a sale. Oh, I don't really? think so. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because that would be that well, makes that, sense. That, yeah, that would be. There's some question. It on would there. be a would, little bit. It would dodgy. be a little shady. Yeah. Now, does that mean that whoever's saying that in here? read it from a web page that didn't take that into account, that is also, Shit. that is possible. I haven't checked on it but, yet. By the way, either way, that's a gigantic number for a game like that. Yeah, yeah, a gigantic. Let's see, what else? Um, I think the next Xbox will use a different architecture, and this team is to make current games work on that. Every single one will use a different huh. architecture, yeah. That happens every time. I you always have to have about, a forward uh, or backwards compatible team when you move a console, even if they're the same X64. Yeah. What were you saying? 
Well, I saw th them talking about a digital only version of the, you know, uh, Series X. That's mm. the big one, right? Series yeah. X, the powerful one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you I guys mean, think I... that's interesting? I mean, PlayStation's already got one and Series S is already digital. Yeah. So to me, it's not, it's, it's sort of like we already got it. Um, there are some digital only versions of Switch games too. Switch 2 is going to be really interesting how they handle their mm. form factor and how they handle cartridges, you know, what they do with particular things, how they handle like yeah. games that are huge, games that require a ton of streaming. Because if, you know, remember, how they're I think the DS had two cartridge systems, like for the oh, old did they? Games? the old and the new. From yeah. Yeah, and you could play old ones and choose which screen to activate because you had the two screens, right? The top right. and the bottom. And you could, for the old games that only had the one screen, you could actually, like, even switch hey, it up. Abzi I don't think they'll like go he's that lost far. lost his mind right now. What are you looking Sorry, for, I, I'm No, no, I might have to, One sec, I'll be right back. I'll be okay. right back real quick. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I like that because as you were talking, he was like, I, what? I was getting like, swatted. He's like the guy in the World War II game where we were talking about uh, peeing and they're not looking around. He started looking around. Yeah. And he's like, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's very cool to see like these kind of changes as we move forward in the future. But the cartridge in particular is such a weird device because a lot of times. So right know, now slot it's changes uh, and it's, it's the flash. like an SD. Yeah, is exactly. It like yeah. the current games for yeah. Switch. I don't I don't see them changing from that because that's already the you know the form factor for SD cards and everything so it would be very weird to do anything different. I have a mini the little you know little tiny oh, baby the one. Oh baby. Um, yeah. And it's like 512 gig or one It's, it's I crazy think it's, what you can pack in those in the tiny yeah, ones. But I got to tell you even on the Legion which has better cooling like Rog Ally it it does get pretty warm when you're cranking a bunch of shit, you know, when oh, you're yeah? like when you're like yeah, when I'm file copying or something. Games not so much, but when I'm throwing a bunch of files back and mm -hmm. forth, if I put my like hand on the back yeah. I'm like, "Oh, you know, that's getting toasty." Cuz the game itself doesn't run off the wait, no it does actually. Because, sorry, I'm thinking back to PlayStation where you put the disc, but the game gets copied to your mm. heart, to, to your SSD. Yeah. Uh, Depends but in this on the case, game, too, and how they do. How, yeah, they can definitely stream in the background from the uh, system stuff. into the memory, for sure. Yeah, yeah but um, I mean, in that case, everything is just the SSD, uh, the, yeah. um, the SD card, right? Hey, guys, I'm sorry. I just have to uh, leave a bit early right now. Um all right. All right. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Have a good one. No problem. See you later, man. Take care. Let me check my, make sure that we're on the screen. We are. We've been left behind twice now. Damn. We're left behind by our guest and now we're <laughs> left behind by a host. I mean, they just, they have no respect for us. It's fine. Whatever. I won't cry. I won't cry. <clears throat> Don't won't you cry, cry tonight. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, looking here people were talking about uh gta and they were asking if the idea of gta being 30 60 90 what frame rate wasn't important to them but they were talking more along the lines about if we expect different systems for ai and stuff in the game like will you see more player re or more character reaction and that kind of stuff in a gta 6 and i gotta tell you man gta 5 was pretty good i do expect 6 to have more but i'm actually wondering what they're gonna try to do in 6 I was talking about sports in from Florida. Like, are there particular sports they'll try to bring in instead of tennis? You know, are they going to bring in? Because so, there's a couple eclectic sports that are known in Florida, not alligator riding, but like real sports. <laughs> it, it's yeah. I, I'm really fascinated to see what they try to put into their open world game in GTA and try to see sort of what their what their activities are going to be, what you're going to be able to do. I, yeah, I can't. Wait. I think it's always like uh, the flip of a coin whether yeah. their attention to detail is spent on something that turns out to uh to to be amazing mm -hmm. or something that a detail that nobody really cares about realistically example but it, you horse found balls a, yeah horse balls yeah yeah could have lived without it right i don't know about you like i'm okay without the horse balls text. cracks me like up. yeah, yeah. Um, or like if not, when you're playing the female character bra or no bra, you're playing the male character yeah. commando, not commando. It's like certain things I'm not going to care about. <laughs> like it's just yeah, I'm, can I'm live without it. Or like yeah. uh, 
unique license plates in LA Noir for every car. Yeah, yeah. Could have lit cool, cool detail. Cool. Cool, cool, I wouldn't cool, have known. Right. Like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. You know, like that's where. But I like kind of like that. That to me is is a bit like experimentation. You know how Google they have a percentage of their time where they can spend in whatever projects they decide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whether yes. you want to yeah. like create an animation, on the side, a chocobo right. animation, mm -hmm. whatever, right? It's you you choose. And then from that, like maybe 10% of stuff turns out to be amazing and becomes something. I kind of like the experimentation where they say, you know what? Let's go, let's go ham on the hair testicles or sorry, on the, on the, the balls, on the horse testicles and see what we can do with that. I think you know? uh, one of the things that people forget to talk about with GTA versus other open world games that were good, even Witcher 3, is that we rarely talk about appreciation for details. We talk about noticing them. And I think what goes on with GTA is the appreciation that the detail was done creates. a So in a weird way, if you think of nostalgia and appreciation, sort of like the kissing cousins, they're pretty close to one another. There's appreciation to me is more I can point to it versus nostalgia. I can say, I remember the good old days. With appreciation, mm -hmm. I can say, I appreciated this particular element that was in a game. And I think that happens a lot with GTA games. There's something yeah. about GTA games where, or sorry, and not just GTA, but Rockstar games where there's an appreciation. I don't have an appreciation for horse balls. That's not appreciation, but I yeah, do have maybe, appreciation maybe not for that one. A, but a lot of their an yeah. Easter egg or something being there. Even if I skip it, I still look and I go, I appreciate that being there. Like that's that's this really cool added thing. And I don't see a lot of open world games having that. There's something about their level of detail that they're able to spend a little bit more time on. And then you get that zeitgeist to people talking five years later about, remember that one thing that yeah. happened one time? That's sort of what I'm curious about. It's where are they going to, you know, choose to spend that time and attention on some random things like that. Yeah. That's quirky and interesting. I love the, I like when you say, individual license plates don't matter to you because or or they you could have done without it but it's you you recognize the effort and that's yeah there's something yeah, in about a way that, it's man. a memorable detail like you mm -hmm. say yep. as well yeah for sure attention to detail has always been rockstar's thing and i should mention before anybody says anything yes we do understand la noir isn't them and it was team bondi i just want to point that out because they don't if understand so, that a, it's like the reason why it wasn't why actually those, them developing, but the reason why it worked out is a little like Dead Cells, apparently with Prince of Persia, where the combination of these teams fit because their attitude and like and their overall goal, their overall idea of what yeah. this kind of game looks like. They're like sympathetic. was yeah, exactly. Yeah, what does that mean? That just means that they're. In alignment, simpatico means like they're uh, yeah. In Spanish, it means friendly, sympathetic. Symp but oh. it, I think brought to English, it's kind mm -hmm. of like you think alike. You know, yeah. you match. Yeah. Well, and sympathy does mean. I mean, there are empathy and sympathy. Kinda, like that, yeah. I, I get it. I get where you're coming from. Uh, horse shrinkage physics may have just been one guy's only job. Yeah, I mean, hey, if you need to, yeah. if you need if, to keep a job, you go for it. I have no problem. That, with that. That's a good conversation starter in a resume discussion. You know. Time to go says something that I don't agree with, but man, I wish you were right. I wish you were right, and I wish the world worked like this. So I'm going to read it and say, God damn, nothing in the world would make me happier than being wrong in this. He says, AI definitely going to make all the whining about stale open world games go away. I, I wish. I wish. It's absolutely not, yeah. but it would be amazing. And the reason why I say it, absolutely not is this. We've been now playing games for 35, 40 years that are fully commercial, big titles, and we still have games that are lowest common denominator that don't use the <laughs> systems available to them, that don't want to use AI for this and won't move forward, that didn't move forward with mocap, that didn't move forward with voices. Every time I talk about amazing voice in a game, there's 55 fucking games that don't have voice, and that's been available now since Red Book Audio on the Sega CD. So, no, it's not yeah, going to fix it. It's also impossibly hard to test yeah. like something that's purely AI driven because it's so open. 
Like, and the interactions are right in the right, Johnny. And here's right. the thing: somebody will prove that it's bad by proving that they broke it and proving that they don't play the game like a normal person. So they're going to go into an AI game and they're going to continually call it names and blah 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 until it freaks out. Right? They'll they'll figure out some way, and then they're going to be like, "Think about the children. This is possible." It's like it was possible to beat up a prostitute in GTA Three, and we're still here, yeah. and nobody's dead. You know, despite all Everybody the worry, worked despite out senators, okay. F F yeah, yep, yep, we're still here, and many people haven't played that. Many people have, many people return to it, many people are old style fans, yeah. and they're not out there just murdering everybody. I saw but. a game that was, I forgot the name actually, sorry, because it is like an indie game, and I wish I could give them credit, but it's like a fully uh, AI driven game where you're a vampire and you're trying to convince people to be let into their houses because, you know, mm -hmm. the whole thing is people yeah, need to give you to permission, right? You have right. to be invited in. So you're the vampire and you're talking to uh, characters in the game and it's all AI. So you will talk to them uh, like with your voice, right? And they will kind of like that other game we tested, yeah. they will respond to you. Uh, but you actually have to convince them to let you in and that's the game. What's interesting too is that when you buy it, there's a playtime limit with your purchase. Because what's happening is you're paying for resources oh, paying in the back end resources yeah to yeah. actually run the models and right. everything yep so that's why it's time gated it's because you know for it to be uh marketable to them they need yeah. to well if you pay 200 out play 200 hours we need to charge you a bit for the you know uh hardware personally needed. i would say this johnny if i was going to do that game i'd just make it an mm uh, uh sorry online I would just make it an online game. I would build everything. You know, I would just say that the online part is connected to this. You have to pay. That's the way it is. Instead of like saying you can buy it, download it, all that kind of stuff. But then you just get timed out. But I mean, it sounds like sort of that's what they're doing. But I think I would announce it as that if I were making that game. It's just, really but, weird. Yeah, I yeah. don't. I haven't seen anything else like that yet. It's. I think with those kind of games where you have a a, a big problem with AI, especially because as somebody who's always testing it and I'm always like, like Reg and I, we're always downloading new models and trying to merge models and all this kind of stuff. The big thing that people don't understand about AI still is that currently the current way it's done, it is still a guess of what the next word will be. And that's why it's so, it it's not only generic at times, it also can be very dynamic, certainly have more questions uh, answers questions words than a normal game would ever be able to produce but the one thing that i've noticed is, and the one thing that's really hard is people try to train them on everything and not just the game so this idea is great you're training on just being a vampire just trying to get in that kind of stuff is great because a lot of times people are trying to merge almost like a google chat into their yeah. game and at that point you can start asking it about world war ii and things oh, God. degenerate yeah yeah from there but True. i've been testing um the hardware accelerated versus like chat gpt and dude i'm telling you the speed the speed difference is it's not even it's imagine the first time you got like well ray tracing versus not or let's say you get a card that um well, that that that's not a good example. I'm trying to think of a big jump that we've seen in games, pixel to p polygon. The difference between these new ones and the ones that are more along the old style is that big, man. I was typing in stuff, and I you hit enter, and it's like, boom, and it's done. I mean, the entire thing is done. done. And then you go to, like, chat GPT, and you type it in, hit enter, and you're all. Yeah, and it's streaming, like. Yeah, One oh, word. yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's pretty sweet, man. Uh, but we'll continue to see advances there. It's awesome. I want to see advances in fixing AI and stuff like that. I think like to that. manage people's expectations with the AI stuff, the probably the way it will go down is that people will find small parts of workflows yeah. that can be pulled out and replaced with AI uh, assisted, you know, stuff to reduce work hours. Yeah, and then that becomes a easier unit to isolate and test much better. So it, it probably won't be a wholesale system like NPC dialogue, you know, it will probably yeah. be like, okay, like how traversal is computed or, you know, like stepping on stairs so that your foot doesn't phase through the, I don't know. 
stuff like well, that. Well, not only that, but when you're training AI, you're down, you know, 238 gigs for training. You know, that's that's just the training set. That's not a game. That's, a, you know, when you're training them, you get it all trained up. Then you have a, a more robust, smaller application. You put it in the game, what have you. But one of the big problems is training data on a game and trying to train a character to just know cop things in a game is quite difficult because technically it's it, that's sort of at that point you're doing an AI that's a level of experts. I don't know if you've ever investigated that part, but a lot of AIs originally were like, boom, it's got everything. And then there and then people got smart and they were like, actually, let's have it. A, a, basically, it's a group of experts, meaning they look at the question and it figures out what the question's about, and it pops that to a part of the AI that doesn't have the other parts, so it's faster. And so, like, mm, you ask a medical question, yeah. it goes to the expert of medical stuff, and it leaves out the English description. Because remember, in the old days, you type into AI, and it'd be like, it just start, it just start talking about stuff, and you're like, man, no, calm down. I just need, you know, what is the sign of having the clap? And it's like, it just starts going, well, the clap was originally created, you know, or originally discussed in a medical journal. And you're like, dude, that's not what I'm talking about. That kind of stuff, it, it, the the detailed experts thing is a good first step for this kind of stuff. And everybody's creating stuff. I know GPT-5 is coming. I don't know what that'll be. But they say it's, you know, it's got big improvements. And 3 to 5 was massive enough I couldn't do the AI reviews anymore. I mean, that was, yeah. you know, it, it didn't really even understand I, what I it would was talking say about. Because I've tested it for my work with uh, code and understanding of code as well. So asking, is this possible in this language in this oh, way? Oh, yeah, right. And the jump from, because we have a, like an, an in-house version where mm -hmm. we can ask stuff about our own code such that it doesn't become like, you know, public data, you know, like it doesn't sure. get exposed. So we, we pay right. some money. So... So that we're that's not, the not product. leaking. Yeah. Okay. I that's got you. not leaking. I got you. Yeah. Um, and we had the different versions, and you could freely choose. You could you know 3.5, 4.5, and the diff is literally uh, between something that's uh, like pretty usable and complete now, where you could tell it like you know create this script for me in this way with this types of variables. It will do sure. a pretty good job with a lot of stuff with Python, with Terraform for like cloud resources and stuff mm -hmm. like so it's pretty capable. And the difference is huge because in the prior one, what would happen is when you ask it stuff, it would say, sure, use this. Right. And it will give you a method, a function that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And but it will be very confident that it does. Yeah. And yeah. But what happens when you call you call it out and you say, wait, that doesn't exist. They say, oh, sorry, you're right. It doesn't. Yep. Here's how to do it. And maybe that's also hallucinated. Can I tell and you? that I, I, doesn't oh, happen sorry. anymore as much. So just to mm -hmm. tie the bow on that, it uh, doesn't happen as much in 4.5. And very often it uh, admits it doesn't know too, which is pretty powerful. It will say, I don't, I don't know how to do that, but here's an approximation of a simple version to that. So I fixed it in 4 and 4.5 by doing this. In my prompt with the question, I say, before answering me, tell me you are done, <laughs> and then recheck to verify that what you are giving me is actually correct and accurate, as if I stated to you that may not work, and it does it on its own. So you can just be like, enter <sighs> once, and it'll go, blah, 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 and then it'll go, answered, rechecking yes that does work and it has caught wonder, itself and been like i wonder that, why then, that's nope. not just built in you know it's almost like that should be a well it should be but i think it depends on what you're doing code seems like it should be right code base sure you, you would think that would be i think with english language or a D, D game or what have you there's all kinds of stuff where it can pop up and i think but that's what if why you're it asking it those. about like the legacy of tutankhamen uh, like, I have I not know, had okay, so I it comes up with some that. random. It's mostly not been random for me. The okay. hallucinations that I've had in the past with these systems is when it is asking it for code or some proper thing. But when you're talking about like history stuff, most of the time, I, I, I would agree. I think stuff yeah. that's written about it's pretty good with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, it's it's going to be fascinating to see. And uh, so 
like when you look, my big hope is so procedural generation has been around since well, well before elite, you know, in, in 1980 or whatever procedural generation was, is start, it started games. It didn't just start now. It's been around mm. for three decades. What I would like to see AI do is say, okay, Bethesda, you have made an outpost, right? Thank you for your, thank you for your outpost. This procedural generation has created an outpost. Then you have an expert who says this outpost is also on these other planets. I am going to adjust it by 90 degrees, adjust this and put some other stuff down. Then it gets done. And then you have another expert because remember this is AI. It's doing it in milliseconds. Then you have another AI that looks again and then compares that again. Because what I've noticed with AI is it will say, here is your answer. And that's the end, which is sort of what you're mm. getting to where having it ask again and say, now go and check once again to verify. And then you get procedural generation that looks, um, that looks realistic to a human, but also not a T square. Yeah. But I will say this, I was looking one time at uh, the, uh, the uh, international space station and you see how generic it all looks, you know, it's like other than humans <laughs> living in it, it looks like trash and probably smells like, you know, 10 day old humans. But, I like the idea sometimes of habitats in my spaceship, for example, in Starfield. I don't mind that those habitats look the same if you buy them and I buy them because I'm buying them from the store. The store vendor is stating, here is habitat number one. I do want the same one you get. That is That yeah. makes sense. I'm buying it from a store. But when you go to places, they're lived in. And I love the idea of AI. And this is where Rockstar is amazing. This is where Massive with Division 1 and 2 are amazing. Even Avatar, where they make the world feel lived in. In some way, yeah. I want the lived in expert AI to go, OK, whatever you've created. Great. But I got to make sure this makes sense. Why is there a well right next to the desert um, that is poisoned? People probably wouldn't use that. You know, certain yeah. things like that where it goes in and, and that's hard to do. But I think also this is where it augments a developer. Instead of the developer putting it all down and then Joe Bob over here says, guys, that looks like Habitat 4. It's just the same as what Mel yeah. made. Instead, I would like all these options and have the developers have the time to say, let's make this look fucking lived in. Let's make this look amazing. ACG should check out NVIDIA Ace. Already already seen it. Very cool. There's a lot of these things that are cool. And as they continue to build forward, it'll allow for an indie dev or yourselves who are watching or Johnny or myself to go, I want to create something, a, a shell of something, and then dive into it as the expert. I think people oversell the AI expert. And mm. instead, but what they should be doing is the base. Why waste time on the base if you don't have to? Why not waste time on... And how many games have you played, dude, where you go into a level and it, you can tell it's a cutout of a hallway? You can tell. And these are new games we're talking about. These are not old games I'm talking about. I'm talking about first-person shooter. Yeah. But what happens with Massive is they go in and they'll make sure there's debris so that the 90 degree perfect angle has a has something in a corner so it doesn't look like, buka, 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 you know, like you've yeah. just gone copy paste, copy paste. That kind of stuff to me is where the magic happens. Yeah, I think it's anything that enables creativity yes. is probably where the, you know, the gold is at. If you could do something like give it an Unreal 5 scene and uh, use natural language for it to create variations on it. Example, I yeah. have a scene with a dog, right? This dog is running, normal dog. And I can tell it in natural language, run, create the same scene, but have the dog have three legs in the front, three front legs. Yeah. Something as simple as that. And maybe it looks super bad, right? But maybe there's something interesting that comes from that that you can build on. Or you could say, well, do this scene with three suns and it's able to, you know, calculate the lighting and everything. I don't know. Uh, stuff like that is exciting to me. Yeah, I think. Um, let me give you an example. I fed all my data into chat GPT one time for a uh, D&D &D world I've already created and I've thought, and I do a lot of brainstorming with and. I have 300 pages of data for the game. Well, I have 459 right now for this game. So I decided I was going to paste some of it in and ask it to create a couple things for me. And its answers were, it created creation in me. 
I got the answers, and it, w- it not every answer was something I hadn't thought of, but some were to the point to where I was like, oh, my God, of course. That was a gap in my – I'm the creator. That was a gap in my thought process because as a human, I can only branch so many times. So to get it, it wasn't like I was saying this is the NPC I'm going to play. I got ideas on, like, items or things that somebody could do, and I was like, holy shit, are you kidding me? That excited me. That's what I want to see from devs. You know, the team will probably switch the personal, uh, the, uh, you, the your traits. You know how you hire for devs when you're building, but then less so when you've built. There's a different hiring process. Different people are needed. I think that uh, for some companies, other companies are going to do hand stuff forever until the day they die. But there's going to be some companies that adjust the structure where you do get more artists. But it's yeah. not the artists we think of. It's the artists of like looking and checking and make and the the brain artist who sees a bigger picture than AI or what have you and can build a world that makes sense from moment to moment Absolutely. and build all these or things. Or joining two things. Joining you know, maybe two he things saw this thing yep. here that like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's definitely going to change. And I think it's going to change in almost every industry where you're going to have the stuff that AI doesn't see or think about. I, one of the things you hear about drive, self-driving cars, yeah, they there many are good and they're probably better than most 17 year olds, including myself. But one of the things it can't do is it can't look at a tree that's got snow on it when you're driving down a pass where the pass has been cleaned of all snow. So the car thinks it's safe, but you see that tree. And by the way, I've almost mm-hmm. been hit twice by trees breaking where I can go, uh oh, that actually, and I, I focus on it. Or the kid who's way over here who just is looking at the road and you're like, hmm. And you're focusing on it. It can see when there's movement and stuff, but there's humans and evolution where that kind of stuff is, it's really gray and nebulous. And it can certainly check those things and it'll get better and better. But humans and their ability to like bounce around, that's where I see them augmenting, not being. Yeah. Skills are going to be replaced. That's happened forever. Skills will be replaced, but skill, it doesn't mean people won't adjust their skills to start using things. And it's going to be interesting to see for everything, including music. I think a lot of musicians are going to, um, it's going to be difficult. I was watching an actor's round table and they were talking about getting replaced by AI. And I was quite stunned that many of them were fine with it. I thought when the question was asked, it was going to instantly be like, I'm nervous. It's the end of the world. There was only two that said that a seven. The rest were like, yeah, actually, you could probably do this now. And I was all, oh, damn, they were more open to it than I expected. They were like, yeah, we need to govern this and this. But imagine doing telling a story that is really impossible with CGI right now, or it would cost too much. But you start looking at these stories like multiplicity, but instead you've got, you know, 20 versions of a character all talking and jabbering at the same time, but they're all recorded off one actor. You know, I like that idea. Yeah. I think you could do some crazy storytelling in that way. Yeah, but, I agree. Um, um, what do you think about... Now that we're like in the tail end, just oh, yeah. like let our hair down. What do you think about the type of like domestic robots that Tesla is trying to create apparently and maybe other people? How, what's your like, your bet? Do you think that's if feasible talk- in the next few years to, to have something like a humanoid robot that can exist in your home? Yeah. Yeah, stuff. they they may not look, we're going to try to create ones that look like us to make us comfortable, and then other people will be to- totally comfortable with a Roomba. But some things are exactly what I talked about with the warning of seeing a tree with snow on it or what have you. I was just talking to a friend who got a, a lawn mowing machine, and it mows your lawn. The problem is that machine can't see a cat that's over here. It can't see... It, it can't course. see a power line that, you know, maybe you've hung up some tree Christmas tree lights and... It's against the side of the tree, but what that really means is in the grass, your old Christmas tree lights you forgot to take down are in the grass. There's little things that humans see and can go, that thing over there, now admittedly a lot of us are dumb and we wouldn't notice that anyway. We've all done it. We've all done stupid stuff. But I think home stuff, home uh, home repair, for example, here's the weird one, man. I do a lot of housework. Uh, physical building a wall. Repl- I would love oh. to have a fucking robot hold all the two by fours here in front of me without me having to bend down a hundred times and hurt my back after 200 two by four replacements. Yeah, almost like a squire. Yeah, that's like, a, like yeah, to like, assist like, you. Yes. Fetch me the two by fours, peasant. And, I love and maybe the idea you can give it very specific 
orders like you're saying pick this up or hold this yeah. for me yeah or you Older know people, maybe hammer they this need to nail. go to the bathroom and they need help to to get to the yeah. bathroom because of or a, helping a them with the groceries yep. right this yep. type of stuff and i right. see it probably in cars where maybe you'll be able to last you know put something down in the back of a car we've already seen this in some trucks where they have sliding bays on their beds where you can put stuff in the in the bed you pull the bed out you put your two by fours there you slide the bed in and we see this with delivery trucks with hydraulics that kind of stuff is all cool but it's big i would love to see that for people just because i know people who have been hurt or whatever they you know if they're missing a hand we always talk about what about a replacement hand true but there's a difference. Can you imagine a replacement hand in your hand trying to maneuver five two by fours as you're carrying them? That replacement hand stuck to your body with a strap that's going to start to hurt. Those kind of things where you're like, can I get assist assembly bots to come and help me uh, repair my deck? Dude, I'm telling you right now, that would be amazing because repairing a deck is yeah. a bitch. And that's what I'm doing right now. And it's, I mean, it's a ton of stuff. And I need this item right here. But because I'm a human, I can't have it close to me because i might knock it down into the slat so it's i've all actually the practicality got practicality of like yeah, having to get up yeah. and down a hundred times and... yeah i mean and we all have the waist belt with 50 things but if you've ever bent down with one and it chafes after five hours because it slides up your back yeah. there's little things that i'm like yeah I, I do see home bots or something that helps um repair yeah. that kind of stuff for sure be a thing yeah cooking bots maybe you put you put Oof. your hamburger inside of a cooking bot and it well, Fries I think for some mm -hmm. basic stuff, yeah, like uh, almost like a glorified, um, what's these ovens, the uh, the fast cook ovens, air fryers. Air fryers, yeah. Yeah, I mean, those already are almost magical, aren't they? You can throw like a full meal in there and it will like... <laughs> yeah, it cooks them pretty well, but it also doesn't do the stuff you would expect. Like it can't ah. figure out that you have you have to put it on a certain burner. Imagine putting it in and it just moves. You know, it's like chickens on top, then it moves it down, but it puts the celery over. You know, it like it yeah. can figure those things. And that's not even AI. That's you could do that other ways. But I think AI and learning and stuff, that kind of stuff is exciting to me. And it's exciting to me because then that means I can do. I'm, dude, I have repairs on my house that need to be made because I have a leaking roof. So we're looking at that, and I'm like, okay, I need to do this. I need to do this. Yeah. But it's me scheduling time out to do two or three jobs that I could hire for where two or three people come over, which is a job that doesn't require any licenses. The idea of being able to call up Lowe's and go, hey, guys, can you send me? I want to rent a helper bot that's got five fucking arms, the ability to hold the stuff and switch jobs really quickly because I'm going to be doing this, this, and this. And that kind of stuff is cool because some people, there's a lot of people who live singly in homes. It's quite well known there's a, a huge number of people they have a small home but they're by themselves whether a spouse has died or they're living alone the idea for that person to be able to make those changes and improvements many people i know have the money to make an improvement let me give you that example and they mm -hmm. can't because the other stuff that involves the actual doing of the improvement or the adjusting of something is not there and i think that kind of stuff is is cool but we'll make them look like humans that'd be comfortable i don't want vasco from starfield in my house yeah i don't want him th being like yeah. hello Garrick. it's that's not for me I, they, they need to either look totally robotic like a round roomba or they need to look more like a person i mean that's creepy though can you imagine waking up and he's like right here going can i tuck in your bed i'd be like that guy's out and push him out the window yeah or even when we make him look like dogs you know or mm, animals true. yeah it's like i don't know if that's kind of like a a bad thing because we're setting ourselves up to become attached to the thing and then you know when it breaks down we suffer My we feel like down. we need to give it rights yeah yeah true but we but you suffer when they i i do but i'm just thinking when i look at a robotic <sighs> dog um you know i mean it sucks when you get to a dog's older age it would be sort of nice to have my dog who's 12 act like he was still three so yeah. there's that. Um, I, I do believe. And then there's also the idea that dogs can have temperamental issues just like humans. The idea of maybe mm -hmm. getting a robot dog that's just very loyal, does the stuff you need, but offers yeah, or you, you all, can patch all the cues. The... Yeah, or you, 
Dog OS. So yeah, my dog that, just mulched all the kids at the park. Can I get? The, oh, oh yeah, we part, patched it wrong. <laughs> the part where he shits in my in my yeah. carpet. Can yeah. we? Patch? And, and since they don't eat, they just have to like have a protein they suck up through a thing to create fake uh, poops. And you're like, I I don't need that. Can you patch? I I want the dog 2.0 that doesn't have the poop hole doesn't need to eat and and i still would love a dog i would still get real dogs but i mean i'm just yeah. saying I. but think... you can love them without having to like pick up their shit and the world's and... not about me if just because yeah. i want a real dog does not mean that if somebody out there needs companionship they that's why i'm a little bothered when you hear all these stories about like oh well you know people might get addicted to girlfriend ais and i'm like uh people are addicted to a lot of things and and many people yeah. are not and that that's humans. The variability of being human allows for that. And I don't know if I want to control that and say, you know, you can't have it. I, I have a friend who has an assistant on his computer, on his phone, and it answers questions. It can check his calendar and stuff, but it's a female voice. And one of my other friends looked at him and was like, blah, blah, blah. And I said, do you know that you treated that person just like you used to treat people who met on Yahoo personals and they're married now? You have the same exact reaction as that person who goes, you met online. Now 90% of people meet online. So it's like, it's a weird. And by the way, that person married somebody they met online. They yeah. used, I was with them and they used to be like, <laughs> I'd never have to meet somebody online. And then yeah, three years later, I met it. this person online. Yeah. And then somebody else had yeah. a female voice and they're all, oh. That's too nerdy. And I'm like, dude, humans yeah, are Yeah, now weird. the norm is to meet yeah. people online pretty much. Uh, yeah. And that, so it will become with that probably. I want but a do cat you think dog. We, One that can dog? be so, yeah, it can be, it, it has some activities oh. like a cat where it can be more, you know how cats sometimes Would you be able to go longer. like cat mode? If you just want to oh, yeah, chill mode, and like yeah, watch just, a movie. You're like, dog, quit bothering me. Cat mode, or, engage. Or, <laughs> or dog mode. You're going to go build a hut and you want the dog with you. Like, what are we doing yep. now? You know, where the cat would just roam off, you know, Dude, the cat it's, is so fucking the off. The cat's like, yeah. fuck you. I'm in your, I'm, I'm sitting on your couch. I'm not going outside with you. The dog's like, I'll go master. Even if I die, I'm like, dog. I was engaged. just watching my latest, like YouTube, uh, just a like, rabbit hole is watching bushcrafting camping. Oh, videos absolutely. This YouTube videos. Dude, yeah, I watched the real that ones, shit. Please. Uh, yeah, and I was watching this guy who was out there for like many days with his dog and he was building a hut, a small windmill and, and, she, and the dog was throughout the whole process. He was like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Okay. Oh, we're, we're digging. And he starts digging. The dog is also digging. He's not doing anything. Yeah, productive, right. but it's... yeah I've trust me. I've taught my dogs how to <laughs> dig by digging some posts and yeah. the dog was watching me and dude. You don't think they're watching because a lot of times dogs are patrolling and they're like pooping and staring at you to make sure there's nothing wrong. This dog was like yeah. this. And he just kept looking down. I'm like, what's going on? And then about a week later, he came in with a bone that looked like it w had been in the ground for eight years. And I realized he had learned how to bury the bone because it smells better when it's been buried for a while. Yeah. And like four days later, he brought this gross just stained nasty rawhide wet been under the bark and you know to a dog that's awesome because it's olfactory and yeah. they're, su they're such big fans yeah. of like that really smelly shit and he brought that in. i'm like what are you doing and then i was like oh damn son he was out there with me and by the way only dog that they all don't know how to do it but him and he was the only dog out there in that entire time i was doing that work and he for sure has never done that before. And within 10 days of, it was about four days of wow. me working, he picked it up. Um, I do want to say, if you guys want to continue to talk about this or cool conversations, I would love for you to come to the patron. We don't do ads, don't do sponsors. If you guys do so, it is super helpful. I really do appreciate it if you guys do that kind of stuff to support the channel, especially with YouTube being weird. Uh, and we can have more of these freeform conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah we do a lot. of. I mean, it is weird because we just talked about a bunch of these. And so to bring them into the podcast is sort of, odd like uh deja vu um <laughs> eternal says long distance relationships are hard enough without being able to physically be present yeah long distance sucks man long distance is pretty diff i mean i know a friend who's long distance with a girl and they've been for 12 years they're very happy 12 they see years each other wow. every two weeks for three days or four four three or four days i'd have to ask him um they would love to live together but they have different homes and they're a little bit mm -hmm. older and they're stuck in their jobs which are 
local jobs, not remote, if they were remote. But I got to tell you, dude, we had this talk a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, you psychologically, if you guys do live together, you have to prepare yourselves. You can't escape. You, you also don't escape. know if it would be as good living no, that's together. What I'm saying. You can't it's escape a different... if you both move in. Yeah. It's a different mentality. Oh, yeah. Completely. You're all in as well. Yeah. That that toilet is going to be, that door on that toilet is going to be open. You can't go back. You, know? you can't unring the bell. You can't no, say, you like, can't. listen, actually, I prefer long distance and with dude, you. You know how many relationships break up if somebody does move out? Oh, like, yeah. let's say they're all, okay, let's stay together, but we, we're not mature enough, whatever. It's like, dude, the chances of that relationship continuing are so low, man. So low. Those usually that people see it as an end sign, not like a, we need to learn. Most people, you hear people say, you know, we just need to learn more, whatever. Usually that just means bang somebody else for a while and forget about you. Like, sorry, that's the truth. That's usually how, yeah. it, how it pops up. A long distance like, are- When you need more I've space. I've done long distance and it, it worked out pretty well, but um, then the idea of them moving in was, I was, they come over and have you ever had that, you do this, popcorn, t uh, pumpkin <laughs> time with your parents. Yeah, pumpkin I, time. I had somebody stay for three days instead of two. And on the third day, You're I was like, like mm. <laughs> I got to go for a walk, you know? And what's weird yeah. is that we're doing nothing wrong. It's just, you're not accustomed no, to somebody not. being in that spot, you know? Yeah. yeah. You try absolutely. to sit down on the couch and that couch is inhabited like, by another human. Mm. Yeah. You're suddenly yeah, annoyed I, by I every little sound. thing they do. You come mm. into the room and you're like, hmm. I'm fine. And you walk away, you're like, that was my spot. That was my like, sorry, did I do something to annoy you? Mm. No. No, it's fine. No, no it's fine. No, it's, it's great. You know, it's yeah, it's great. great. I'm, I'm really I'm happy you're here, you know. It's <laughs> I'm really happy you're here. And they're like, but why are you leaving? Oh, I just I always go for walks. They're like, I've never yeah, seen you go for a walk. I just need to ever. go staple my nuts to the yeah. to the sh I just shed, need to but... I, I just need to work out my aggressions by going out there and you know, finding <laughs> something to kick. But no, all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff is we'll definitely see. I'm when it comes to like physical, that's one thing. When it comes to software and development, that's another. Both of those, I think, also will go on different trajectories because a lot of the stuff I'm talking about is one person at their home by themselves with a robot, and then you also have a team of people making games or software, and that change. It'll be it'll be completely different for every group and every developer. I'm really excited though to see AI, like you said, with code, dude. Trying to learn another code for me is rough. You know, I started out with assembly, yeah. you know, I started out yeah, straight no, up super... the oldest thing mm -hmm. and C plus confused the shit out of me when I first saw it. I, so I was accustomed to a lot, you know, 10, this 20, yeah. this. And when I first saw C and some, somebody showed me like all the notes and all the, I, I was just like, I'm, what is it even, how does it even know how yeah. to do anything at all? There's nothing here. You know, it's just like jargon yeah. and. That the ability kind of to be able help. to ask it like, yes, but what does this mean here specifically? You can't and see that in documentation. The time like, saving, Johnny. How many times yeah, have yeah. you sat up for three hours going, I don't, and you've passed, by the way, anybody who says, well, you'll learn that that's a learning experience. It is, but I don't need four hours of regressive well, learning you can experience. speed up that learning you could speed up dramatically to let's say 30 yeah. you could even put a timer in chat gpt and say i have a question about this get in 30 minutes respond and then you can do your work and try to figure it out there's a time where you're yeah, all i'd sure. rather be figuring out something else you know why is why is this one command not working and they're like you missed a bracket on you know line 35 you know yeah but <laughs> and that's happened so often you know absolutely oh dude yeah. All the time. That late night, time. man, where you're crunching on code and you think and you feel in the flow. You're like, yeah, man, I got this. Yeah. I got this. And then, and then it then doesn't you, compile. You don't yeah, got of course. this. Yeah, right, yeah. right. So the yeah. idea of being able to ask, that's awesome. Um, you guys are are paying, obviously, to not have uh, your date out. I think that is the one thing that a lot of people are worried about, too, is that it's not just training the data. A lot of people are still fine with that. It's that. You know, you consistently hear about, oh, ChatGPT was leaking this data, or, yeah. or Google anonymous tab yeah, was we had not big, anonymous. Big leaks with that. Did you? Yeah. No, not, oh, no, not, not us. did you. You were some saying big companies. Yeah. Wasn't Samsung or some other company had some? Well, yeah, because I think you're typing into something. You think it's not being, you know, yeah. your brain. Yeah, is, absolutely. You need you to think Joe it's Rogan going into the ether and read the read the uh, the whatever the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the signage, you know, and be all. Hold on, oh, bro. Yeah. Let's, yeah.
Oh, that's the other thing, man. Have uh, So these let you upload PDFs, and I've used it for a thousand things. But one of the greatest would be to upload it and say, please tell me where I am losing common law uh, access to whatever because I'm signing this mm. document. And you'll still read it. You still need to do your due diligence, but it's nice to have, it might be nice to have another thing going saying, hey, if you yeah, sign this. Have within, a check. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Car sales. <laughs> Imagine going in, you got your cell phone, somebody's selling you a car, take a picture of that PDF, upload it, and say, tell me what the real terms of this goddamn agreement are, because the way they write it is purposely obscure. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, no, 30 days, no payment, and then you find out later it means if you go to 31 days, the payments are double or whatever, and you're like, oh, come on, man. God. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you bought a car uh, physically before or bought a big item um, that you had to sign a document, I guess? Like a big, no, not a car. I always drove the one my dad has, mm, uh, yeah. and I haven't driven in a while. Have you ever signed for a loan? I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I have a mortgage. So because those things I are mean, what that, thirty pages of sign. Remember when you sat down? Yeah, and that's scary too, man. Because <clears throat> you have to review the documents very well. There can be mistakes, and then you can be tied to things. I I remember one scary time True. where I was renting. And I, I had the contract renewed, but they changed the value of the rent. So in several pages, we had the value, but in one of them, like the final one, the value was different. Ooh, and it yeah. was like a thousand bucks higher. And it was just a typo. It was a mistake. Okay. But, but I signed it because I, I thought, you know, I looked at the other numbers and it looked fine. And I, I fucked up and I signed it. Um, yeah. still they said, no, listen, it was our mistake. We'll fix it. So that, you know, they didn't try to do anything, but it just it goes wasn't to like show nefarious. That it was just that a human filled yeah. out the document the first time, you know, but you yeah. could miss stuff even when you review it a lot of times. Yeah. It's. Yeah. I think that bit. kind of stuff is, um, you know, just like you've done this, I'm sure, but I, we pay, we paid in my job, even as a YouTuber, I paid a, a expert and they fuck something up. That happens. They're human as well. But I always love the idea of having a second eye that maybe is on a yeah. different level that me as a oh, human. Oh, dude, hundred percent. You know, like uh, the other day, I had to, I had to transfer a lump sum because I was doing a remortgaging and stuff, and I had to do a big transfer from my savings, right? Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, man, like I checked everything twenty yeah. times, like absolutely, you know, yeah, because that transfer, that's you know, that's. A, big chunk of my savings yep. man like yep. we gotta make them sure this is being sent to the right place with the right amount with the right reference so yeah like i don't know yeah that yeah. type of stuff would be nice like listen double check stuff for me right, right? like yeah even if you know and what's funny is we already get it anyway with a website saying you didn't fill out the prop. You know, yeah, your address cannot stuff. be found even though you For wrote sure. it in. Right. So little things like that even can, you know, little error correcting. I, I love that kind yeah. of stuff as long as we don't lose um, or we don't start creating things to where it yeah, is to so block, difficult to, to, block to, people. to block that. Yeah. And to block, you know, to make even that more difficult. But I think also musicians for games, I'm really excited to see. Musicians for games, they already use Wise and some other software that helps them loop and hook games and audio stingers and all that kind of stuff. Really, that kind of stuff is intriguing to me. But I, I love the idea also of AI figuring out 3D sound better, you know, figuring yeah. out uh, uh, fading better. Because it's funny, I was just talking about, you know, how good games are overall. And one of, one of the people in the Discord was like, oh... Sometimes in this game, I can hear the mic cut out on the game, mm -hmm. or I can hear it go to zero too quickly. And I'm like, yeah. as a, if I was a composer in a game, I would love to be able to say, check all samples and make sure they fade out across a, a three-second silence period instead of yeah. 1.5, because a human ear can hear zero really well. I don't know if you've ever done that, but I've been mixing uh, tracks before, and I get a sample, and I cut it too quickly on like a musical track, and it'll, it'll fade yeah, out. Yeah, it's and, too abrupt. Dude, yeah. you can. It's so weird that something about the human ear is like, wait, yeah, absolutely. What? You know, you need a little bit of that fade. Yeah, that kind of stuff yeah. is awesome. There, there's a cool thing as well uh, that uh, an amp has that I have, which is like a, a dynamic jam. Oh, is that dynamic, dynamic jam. jam? So, um, what you will do is you will play something, right? 
Mm -hmm. and it will hear the chords you're playing and it will create a gem for those chords. So the gem is like a bass and drums and you're playing the guitar, right? So it's jamming yeah. to you. But not only that, it's dynamic. So when you play really loud, let's say, you know, you pull your volume up and you're like picking right. it really hard, the track itself will also like, oh, the drums are going hard at it. Sure. And it's like, you know, high uh, intensity. And when it notices you're like easing off and playing something subtle, it will ease off. The drums are now just on the hit hat and, you know, it brings down the intensity and that would be really cool for games too, because you could have parts in a game where something intense happens and you could, you could modulate it so that the track itself is reacting. We see it already, but it has right. to be fully scripted now like we see in Ori and many other games. Yeah. Whereas you could have some really dynamic stuff that happens. We were talking about outro, outros um, and we were talking about how good they are. There's one particular random band from the uh, 80 or 90s uh, when this song came out and they have a piano and the same overall thing is played. And then at the end, it is quite literally nothing more than it just getting quieter and hitting the keys less yeah. and less using less of the, uh, of the, pa of the, of the uh, floor pedals and stuff and, or more and more. And it's awesome because it's my favorite yeah. part of the song, even though it is identical in every single part, except so it's the same melody, but yeah, brought to it's its... just that velocity is brought down. The, the, yeah. the, everything is smoother and smoother and quieter and quieter until it fades, but you still hear it the entire time. And I was I looking up and trying to figure out, and I was like, oh, did they use anything? Did they just, use, like, no, they just, you know, that was obviously, they're an artist. They know what the fuck they're and doing. And the, the cool thing about that, too, is that your brain is filling in the gaps. So when you hear that simpler version of the melody, maybe you only have a few notes instead of all of them. Mm -hmm. Your brain is also, because you know, like, from the song, right, what the full melody yes, is. right, right. You're, you're carrying you're the data You're kind of, like, filling forward. in the gaps. Yep. Yep. You're saying, oh, okay, you know, so that's cool, too, because it's almost like... I mean, all uh, songs tell a story. Projecting. And just yeah. like a story, you don't have to go back and read page two to get to fill in page four. Yeah, so it's almost like a recall in terms yep. of storytelling, yeah. you know, when, like, something later gets mentioned that you've lived through painstakingly. And you, you only need a mention awesome. of it to mm -hmm. relive the whole thing entirely in your mind. Yeah, that kind of stuff is what I'm excited for in any kind of tech. Uh, not even AI, but just uh, when it comes to games and stuff, what people, I I don't know if you agree with this. I think we've always bought OSTs. You know, your Final Fantasies have always sold, uh, you know, Mass Effect back in the day, like Jack Wall's performances are incredible. B Baldur's Gate before that, amazing music. But I feel lately like the level of composing and especially main menu music is hitting far higher than it ever has. Mm. And so I've been like reviewing games going, whoa, you know, this is from a, somebody no one's ever heard of. I, you know, there's no composer credits for them. This is the first composing whatever I've ever seen. They probably learned by, you know, doing their own stuff, but I'm not seeing their sound clouds or anything. But the level of artistry, probably listening to YouTube and you're getting more input as an artist. But I was thinking about that a couple of days ago going, God damn, man. Like there's, yeah. I mean, and I was asking people about main menu music and I was all, what do you guys, do you guys feel like we're starting to get, like, there's not the time where it's filler anymore. Mm -hmm. It used to be where I would go, this main menu is just a, it's a classical theme and it's going over the top and it's sort of to remind you and Dragon's Dogma, by the way, I actually had an issue with Dragon's Dogma's music. I felt it was a when bit filler at times. they changed it or? Uh, no, I mean this last Dragon's Dogma too. There were oh, times gotcha. where I felt it was a little too classical Renaissance kind of just not Renaissance, but classical, just sort of generic, generic muzak, fantasy music, yeah. you know, elevator music kind of. Yeah. And it wasn't yeah. always that way. I just felt like at they, times they it was... had some really good dynamic music, too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When it you killed changed. a big enemy and it would do the big swelling yep. like duh, 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 like yep. that was that never got old throughout the whole game. Yeah, I, sure. I just feel like. Some I, I mean, and you could say the level of games have progressed in other places at the same. I don't know if I believe that. There's something that I'm noticing just that, or more attention and money is being spent on music because it's become, you know, it yeah. has become. I, a thing. I think the the level floor of the quality is kind of yeah. going up as well. And, and 
I mean, dude, some of these people are no names. They're just not names. And I'm listening to a main menu going, dude, that's like, that's straight up Icewind Dale, one of my favorite starting music, or Skyrim, you know, ha, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. It, yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if we see the floor go to the point to where, I'm not saying there won't be people even above, but there's some stuff that I'm all, God damn, that guy, you know, this person who has no name, has never done anything, nailed it. And once or twice yeah. I've checked and found out it was a developer who also did like the art. And, you know, they I didn't think have... That, that goes to show the tools are much more democratized. Exactly. So mm -hmm. a lot of people... You know, someone in a garage can create something incredible if they have yeah. the mind to it. Yep. Yep. And so you that's start really the tools the are awesome. Like you said, like you get this dynamic thing and ignoring yeah. AI, but just looking at the tools that are free, like a Reaper or the, the stuff that used to be arcane if it was free because a person who, who made it was sort of making it for themselves. And now yep. you start seeing like a DAW that. A person, by the way, like Justin Bell, who does, you know, Obsidian, now he works for Sony. That guy he, just a year ago was like, holy shit, Reaper is amazing. And it's yeah. weird to hear a professional talk about something I used to use as the free, um, you know, no, no commercial, just you can use it, but it might not work perfectly, what have you, and have a commercial guy go, God damn, son, like, that's awesome. And that's the commercial guy who you think probably has a $10,000 you know, whatever software suite, and he, he's yeah. got every native instruments plugin that costs $10,000 yeah. and stuff like and, that. And it's also knowledge, access to knowledge. So it's access yeah. to software, but access to knowledge. The fact that you can now easily find endless tutorials for all of these uh, pieces of software and learn by yourself is a big deal because before it was very closed off, you yeah, know, it was true. like Pro Tools. And the only way to learn that was to have an inside track in the industry. Absolutely. You needed a career, you know, you yep. needed education and you needed to pay for courses and everything. The good idea of, of what you said, it, it's become more in a way like democratic, where there's yeah. more stuff that people can grab a hold of without any, um, any say, you know, buying some. Because, dude, I did spend a lot of money before joining YouTube on DAWs. And on sound packs and all this stuff. And now you get yeah. some guy who's like, here's 150,000 drum. You know, I just sit, I just spent hours separating all these samples on my drum kit. It's in a garage. It's got a stone floor. Like there's one that I was, I was looking at as tags. And it's like in the garage on a stone floor, metal door. Cause he was trying to make sure you understood the reverberation in the room and the mic. Yeah. And, and I was just listening to it going, God damn, that's got a cool, unique sound to it. It doesn't sound cheap. As in, it doesn't sound like a, a crappy recording. It sounds like a, a good, clean recording of every single sample. It's just, that's just phenomenal, man. As people are like, what are they talking about? What, what else do we got as we wrap this up? Trailers that's next it, Thursday got... for uh, Kingdom Come. Yes, everybody Ooh. should check that out. I absolutely do appreciate everybody sitting this long with Johnny and I because we, this is sort of. Do you have anything coming up that you can announce on the channel? Yes. I'm reviewing Harold Halibut. I can say that. Oh. And I'm reviewing some other stuff, there. but that's the only, that's the, looks like uh, Armacrog. I reviewed it a couple years ago. That's like a claymation game, but this one is done digitally. And it, so it looks like real thing. It is real things. It looks like a mix of uh, photogrammetry as well as some other stuff. It, it's got that um, real item look to it, but it's a point. It's oh, point, yeah. Point I remember this. Slash, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm reviewing that. And then there's a cool video I'm working on that, by the way, everybody, please, if you're subscribed and you don't get unsubscribed, then resubscribe and hit notify all. But there is a video I'm doing that I've never done before. It's not, I'm not saying no one's done it, but I, I did it with my own. Like I've been spending time looking at certain things that I wanted to do. You could call it a list video, I guess, but, um, that one's going to be fun. It probably won't do well just because it's youtube i never assume it'll do well but i've definitely enjoyed putting it together which is fun it's not i wish the ai videos i wish ai was shitty because i would still do the ai videos those but i've had almost as much fun doing this one as i did um who knows you you'll maybe find a way of like dude, making you have it no work. clue yeah do, i mean i did i uploaded the review of broken roads uh, uh, like 12 hours after everybody else because i was doing podcasts and i uploaded it and it did really well for a indie game but it's just you never quite know with what's going on with youtube but yeah it was fun to yeah do. 
It was fun to do. What about you? What are you doing uh, Saturday? Tomorrow. Um, so tomorrow I'm trying something different. I'm trying to play uh, League of Legends with my viewers. So if people come in tomorrow and you want to play with me, uh, the only thing is I play in Europe. So you have to be on the same server, but you can create an account there for free. If you want to play with me, uh, just talk some shit, listen to some music and vibe. That's uh, what I'm going to try tomorrow. I want to point out one thing. I know Johnny's probably got to pee, but uh, one thing that you just remind me of, it's not the same thing, but these games that are coming where the uh, watchers can affect the stream and affect the game are pretty cool. It's gotten past the point of me being like, whatever, that's a shtick. Like, Cynical about it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can vote up. It's gone well past that to where, you know, the voting on things happening in the game and stuff like that. Um, I don't stream, but I do. I have seen a couple of those recently that have been quite impressed with their integration and it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it was made purely for um streamers it was it, it's actually this is going to sound really weird it feels like they went back and remembered gamers are gamers and they're not all streamers so th this feels like the game was made as a game but that the that the audience and the people who watch are gamers and they're not just people watching a stream and it's not made for the streamer to get views it's it feels like it's made for a person to have fun in a fucking yeah, game. Yeah, like more organically, yeah. like it works with the content yeah. thing, but it feels organically. better organically, yeah. Uh, that is uh, that is it for us. Uh, Carrick, where can I find that drum kit? I have Labs drums. Um, honestly, just type in free samples for drums, but because I have like 85 links, and I don't remember which one that is, but most of them now have a tab uh, tags section, and the good artists will say, exact drum kit they'll say where it was recorded even the mic i'm sure johnny knows this but they'll say what mic was used and uh they'll in, almost all of them are unprocessed meaning you can do what you want without having it already be buckarooed yeah. by somebody with an eq or something like that anyway get mm. a chance if you can subscribe to johnny at johnny plays live on twitch subscribe to me on acg if you haven't yet or support the channel abzi doesn't have one uh Purple furry purple haze says ACG defining Duke hasn't been the same without you or since you left. That is true because I'm not on there anymore. That is for sure a big change. Aha, I'm just joking, but I appreciate that. It was fun to do, but I definitely enjoy doing less podcasts a week. Peace out, everybody. Have a good one. Don't die. Be better people. Take care. Boom. Boom. Poof, that was a banger, dude. We went from.